Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, goblins of all ages, welcome back to a regular scheduled time and programming of the greatest goddamn D&D stream in this world and the next. Yeah, you're welcome. Goblins into the stairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got Carlos Garcia, a.k.a. the nastiest dookie in all the land, Captain Rampoo McNasty. And of course, I ain't here alone, because I'm rocking with my stone break. <laughs> I'm here with Langston Embershrod. I'm here with Manta Zermeister. I'm here with Crick, Crick, Crick. God damn it, here. Yeah. And of course, we're on operation to get to Doom Space, AKA Operation Banana Ketchup, which can't get going without the greatest guy in the DDM and other land. Here, yeah, it's Nate Gonzalez. Take it away, here. Yeah. Thank you to the nastiest poo in all of the multiverse. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to tonight's Sunday night edition. Your regular scheduled programming of Goblins Under the Stairs. Uh, let's get on into this thing as our adventurers are still traveling through the Astral Sea on their way to Doom Space, aka Banana Ketchup, uh, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so, as uh, we give you guys a quick little reminder of what happened the last time we were together, our adventurers have ran themselves into this massive, shadowy nebula. Uh, spewing off shadowy forms from its um, core. You guys were able to use your fire and radiance to dispel it and continue on your travels safely and soundly. Uh, a bit after that, Crick noticed a flashing coming from his satchel uh, where the lunar dragon egg resides. And after spending some time studying it and uh, noticing that the, the astral sea, the place you guys find yourselves in that connects all the different realms and planes together is literally the cosmic fiber that connects everything to its place it seems to be causing some sort of reaction to this lunar dragon egg and uh, he was able to amplify in a sense uh, the hatching and growing process of the dragon within uh, creating this mechanism formed with lenses and prisms and uh, mirrors to amplify the arcane energy in the astral sea. Uh, Manto used his psychic soul knife forces to control that energy as Rampu tapped into his draconic nature and with the new stellar lance Langston took those energies, combined them together and directed it into the contraption that Crick uh, put together and that is where we left off as the adventurers stare at this egg and the pulsing and glowing Crick's hand on it feels this warmth and then suddenly a chilling touch goes through his core as the final surge of energy flows into this egg. You see this brilliant silver light burst from its shell uh, filling the whole ship deck up with radiance as pure and bright as starlight. And you hear the cracking as the egg begins to crack, and each fracture spreads light in thin silvery lines. And with a final resounding snap, the egg shatters and the light slowly fades, revealing Ooh. a slender silver dragon wormling. Its scales glimmer like moonlit water, and its eyes bright and knowing meeting each of you guys with its, as it turns its head around. And with a soft hum of energy that fills the air, uh, a gentle voice reaches out into your guys' minds. Uh, if you hear a voice in Draconic, of course. Uh, Who has brought me into this light? And the wormling, it stretches its wings out and steps from beyond the shell. Uh, Crick kind of steps up. Hey, I think uh, that would be me. Kind of turns its glance in your direction and gracefully approaches you as if, as if it already knows you, and you have this spark of, uh, this is a spike of or a spark of psychic energy that kind of forms a bond, flowing between the two of you, and. I mean, this, this link, it feels as ancient as the stars themselves. And in an instant, each one of you guys, a flash of a vision fills your minds. As you see a glimpse of the young dragon before you, soaring through wild space, 
and its path illuminated by a blazing light in the distance. This feeling it brings, it's vast and mysterious to you all. It begins to stir something deep within you. And as you watch, as the dragon kind of just flies through that illuminated light, the vision fades, and the wormling nestles up beside Crick, uh, folding its wings with a, a gentle sigh, and radiating a bit of a, a quiet trust. It seems, in this moment, ready to journey bes uh, beside you guys with whatever lies ahead. As I just kind of slowly pet its head and go, I think you'll fit right in here. Do, do you have a name? It says, well, you, this is all telepathic, you hear this um, in draconic voice. Uh, what is the name that one would give me? My name's Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I shall name you Aho. Kind of looks at you with a gentle gaze and gives you a nod of uh, approval and acceptance with this. And you guys watch as you see this. Uh, I'll send a picture to you guys. This adorable little My God, pale so alabaster cute. skinned <laughs> dragon wormling. His tail curls up beside Crick oh, and he kind of nuzzles up beside him. Kind of looks like Sparrow. <laughs> yeah. The name is I think so. And yep. uh, as that, uh, <clears throat> he nuzzles up, I look at Jake. I say, go on. Make friends, buddy. And Jake. You know, he usually likes to be the only one, but he just, like, kind of goes up and um, gives him a look, and he snorts out some fire, which means he likes him. As Jake so snorts fire. out that fire real quick, you watch uh, uh, Aho's eyes illuminate, and quickly, he kind of blinks out of existence right there. You see him kind of shimmery, tran turn transparent, and then she turns right back there and gets up close to Crick in that moment. No, don't okay. worry, little one. That means Jake likes you. You guys are going to be best of friends. Do you think Jake has the capability of lactating for his nourishment? Uh, well, considering he's a ostrich made of imagination and power, probably not. Maybe. I don't know that. I don't know, they give him lactating nipples and, you know, the magician's book. <laughs> you, you never know if you don't ask. These are the questions. I mean, it's worth trying, I guess, you know? I'd, like, look at Jake, I'm like, well... <laughs> and he just, like, backs away. And like, just... <laughs> he didn't snort fire on that one. Just like, stay yeah. away from his nipples. Uh... <laughs> He's not a fan. <laughs> I think Aho's nipples are off-limits at this current juncture. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So we have a, we have two dragons now. That's kind of electric. Uh, we have three dragons, and I point to myself. <laughs> three. So sorry. Okay. Most people forget since I'm a captain. I, okay. I, I viewed you as That's yeah, the, the captain. That's on me. It's all right. I'll forgive you one day. Okay. I'll wait well, for buddy. that day. I guess where where are we off to everyone? Did everyone have that same little uh vision once uh Aho was kinda of born? But you know him kind of going along uh dark space with that light trail. You think that has any uh sort of significance? We all did have that vision, right? Yep, each one of you guys did. <laughs> As you surrounded around uh, the egg and him. Well, I have to say, uh, it's very rare to, for a group to have such shared visions, so whatever it is, I'm sure it was sent just for us. Which means we must stick together. And something tells me protecting this little guy is a task that we're charged with. Don't worry, buddy. No one will hurt you. And I even, like, slyly look at the group a little bit. 
Particularly the other dragon that wanted to get nipple play. So, Chris, if you're the mama, who's the daddy? <laughs> and that was Mice's idea. <laughs> what? No way. I'm just crazy for this. Was, yep, that was totally Langston's idea. <laughs> okay, I see. So what? We get it. We get another dragon to the group, and suddenly Langston's bottom of the food chain. Okay. <laughs> I call dibs on dad then. What the? <laughs> Fine. Allow it. Okay. Hey, oh, come meet know. your new dad. <laughs> Hello. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's. Maybe we should um, keep on with our journeys. Fine. I think we can see if we can learn anything from poor little Aho. So you guys are sitting here and having this oh, conversation. I just got it. <laughs> 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 I was waiting for it. I was like, I realized, Come on. I realized that's what you said. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Amazing. Um, <laughs> as you guys are sitting here and uh, talking about this, and actually, uh, Manto, go ahead and roll an insight check for me. Oh, yeah. Uh, nineteen. Wait. Yeah, nineteen. You're proficient with insight. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah, as you sit here and you reel back in your mind about this vision that you had and, you know, ask the group if you guys think that there's any sort of connection or significance, although it might be not so uh, clear right now, you do have an inkling that this vision certainly holds uh, some weight, some significance to it. Music is some holiday shit. And I just heard a little like sleigh bell. Yeah. Um, is what I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> what I from that insight checked, I don't know if this role is enough to obtain the information that like where like like what exactly is the significance of that light trail? Um Say with with the role that you made and your just general insight, um, no, nah, it, it's you know it's not something you recognize, but it definitely seems like a like a uh, like a significant source of light. Okay. Yeah. Without saying uh, too much. Um, yeah, but uh, in, in addition to this manto, as you're, you know, kind of reeling over this, over your shoulder, you see Crux, like the, the meme of the one guy rubbing his hands uh, behind Starbo, peeking at you guys and watching the scene unfold. Oh no, he looks like Spice Adams. <laughs> is that who it is? <laughs> yeah, Spice Adams. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> What's on your mind, Crux? Kind of uh, peeks his head around the corner now, fully exposing himself. As uh, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Spice Adams. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh uh, sorry, didn't didn't mean to interrupt uh, Manto or anything. But just uh, guys, uh, that egg. It's you, you got yourselves a a little dragon there. He sees his eyes just wide with uh, amazement. Uh, yes, very good observation, Crux. Uh, uh, it seems like you're scheming something. <laughs> um, on your mind, dude. No, 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 no not scheming anything. Sorry, I just, I didn't want to interrupt anything. I just, I saw you, uh, sorry, I've, I've never seen a, a, <laughs> the birthing of a lunar dragon before. I'm sorry if I'm a little uh, shaken up right now. I'm surprised you, you guys are taking this so uh, easily. Well, as official surrogate father of uh, this wormling, whose name is Aho, uh, may I invite you to come? Uh, well, hold on. Let me just ask the uh, the mother. And uh, Crux, I turn to Crux. Can Crux kind of check out Aho? He friend it. As long as he's safe. Yeah, uh, Crux, as long as you're gentle, you can come check him out. To be fair, well. Uh... This is our first time in space, so you know, everything is weird to see out here. 
So you're saying we should put a leash and collar on it? I thought this was normal around these parts. Yeah. Um, Crooks comes walking on up, like, very excitedly. Oh, no, man, there's nothing normal about this. I mean, I don't think, I didn't think ever in my life I'd see the, the birthing of a dragon. I mean, let alone a, a, a lunar dragon. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, this is beautiful. He goes over, he just starts to try to pet it, and, uh... Aho uh, kind of gently leans its head on over, and Crux touches it. So it's colder than I imagined, too. Uh, wow, this is. I mean, you guys told me you had a lunar dragon egg, and I saw this thing. I thought maybe, uh, you know, sure. Yeah, it's a lunar dragon egg. I, maybe uh, my friend back in the day. Uh, God, I can't remember her name. Got Sartell. She, I think maybe she might have told you something wrong, but I mean, seeing it with my own eyes, that's a whole other story. Their, 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 uh, their parents, I'll just say that they're not too keen on potentially ever losing, uh, dragon eggs. Uh, usually the mother sticks around for a long time and, and watches them and, you know, makes sure that they're protected. Uh, this is just not something you see every day. How old do typical lunar dragons age to? Oh, uh, hundreds of years old. Oh. Hmm. So crick, how old are you? How old am I? A crick. So curiosity. I. That's a good question. Probably like forty. I oh maybe. Wow, you look great for forty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, stop eating garlic so much. <laughs> but maybe we could find this little buddy his parents. If they'll take yeah, it. Do you, uh, do you know anything about your, your parents? Any connections that you feel with them? Anything? Kind of like turns and spins a little bit, trying to sense inwards. You can guys just hear a voice in the, in your minds uh, return back and just ah, there's, there's nothing. I I mean, do you remember much of your life prior to being born? I'm gonna drop to one knee, get into eye level with the little guy, and say, well, I. I don't remember much, and like you, I was separated from my family at a young age, but let me tell you something, even though I didn't grow up with them, I still feel this powerful connection to them, as if one day I will know the answers I seek. So I'm telling you, even though you might not feel it now, Try to find that connection. It is within you. And trust me, it'll lead, give some direction to your current life and our current quest. Kind of gives you a nod of understanding and uh, and thanks for the for the bit of inspire, inspiring words there. Uh, kind of like you know, like a baby, kind of just gets nuzzled up and looks tired and begins to like pass back out in this moment and just kind of uh go to sleep as it's just you know in and out of kind of this like uh of this conscious state currently as it's just awakening in this moment for the first time and uh yeah rampu you feel those your words touch uh <laughs> what's it uh, -oh. uh quite <laughs> deeply and fondly, uh, especially being a dragonkin yourself, and I um, can only hope that those words resonate uh, deeply. Amen. As, he, as he lays down and goes to sleep, I kind of, like, pick him up and nuzzle him and say, let's put you someplace more comfortable. As I, you know, I would walk him down and put him in wherever I was sleeping with blankets and Give him a little glass of water next to him and a bowl, I guess. I don't know if they use glasses or bowls. <laughs> and uh, make him comfy. And kind of come back up to the crew. 
kind of tuck him away safely. Love it. Well, I guess we keep on keeping on. Now that we have a new dragon friend. Hey, man, let's rock. Yeah. So in that case, what are we doing here, Scallywags? Get off your asses. Let's get rocking. Hey, hey. Aye, aye, Captain. And Crick runs in the back and starts loading the ballista. <laughs> hey, it's good to have it ready. <coughs> mm -hmm. Like that. As you run on back there, you see Flinch uh, helping, you know, get the gear situated and uh, and polishing up and then fine tuning the ballista, and uh, looks back at you, Flinch or uh, Crick rather, and uh, as you call him out there, it's like, hey, uh, I didn't want to bother you guys over there. Crux uh, mentioned you had some serious uh, situation going on, and that there was a, a new a new friend on board. Yeah. All right. Meet Aho. Don't be too loud about it. He is uh, sleeping. Oh. Keep it down then, and maybe I'll meet him later. But it's always good to have uh, new friends on board, and especially one like a, a lunar dragon. I just, uh, I just hope that mom and dad don't come looking for him. Well, to be fair, I do, uh, know that Mama Dragons are not the most understanding, but if it's not because of us and uh, Amy's attachment to Crick here, might have never even been born. Yeah, to to be fair, Mom already knows where he is. Which I like. <laughs> through uh, uh, I kind of like put my arm around Kit Crick when he said that. Crick is not a stepmom. <laughs> He's just the mom that stepped up. <laughs> Flinch is <laughs> shook and upright now. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, I just um okay. I'm glad we're good. I'm glad uh mama's here and not angry then. Uh Crick here here and he hands you the ballista bolt. Will you reach that over and put that in there for me, please? Absolutely. Can I I actually like load it with like a ballista bolt, and then I tie two ballista bolts around the ballista bolt, so it's three ballista bolts sitting in one ballista bolt. Flinch looks at you. He's like, "I'm not sure the aerodynamics are going to work quite properly with that setup, but you know, I've seen you build some crazy stuff, so maybe we'll see how it works." Well, I've seen it work. <laughs> I've also seen it fail, but I've seen it work too. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I guess just like uh, Crux's gun, right? <laughs> Kinda gives you an elbow. <laughs> yeah, he's hard. Hey, take it easy on him, okay? We're working, we're practicing, and we're only getting, getting better, better. day day, right? Oh, that's I, look. Crux, since you guys came around, I kind of looks over his shoulder to make sure he's not speaking too loudly for Crux to hear. He's like, he's really uh, he's really got a swing back. I don't know what it is about him, uh, or what about it. I don't, I don't know if it's the idea of revenge against the Astral Elves, you know, having some sort of purpose once again, and, you know, a, a fun quest ahead, and I don't know, he's, he's really seeming like himself once again, and I, I gotta thank you guys. We couldn't get his head out of his ass for the longest time. Well, sometimes you need to, uh, get a little confidence boost and, you know, not be drunk all the time. That seemed to help. Yeah, he, he's he's got a problem with that. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, he definitely. I don't want to say it out loud, but you know, woo, good lord, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I won't go into details, but it involves a bucket, a fishing pole, and him not being able to catch anything. And oh, <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, Manto, I appreciate you guys. Uh, you know, practicing back and forth, and I know he gave you that new gun, and I'm. I'm sure he'd be gung ho on showing you uh, the ropes with that uh, thing. Oh, believe me, once you get out of here uh, with this conversation, I'm <laughs> heading on over to Crux to uh, get some practicing. Don't mean to hold you up. Kind of looks. Actually, I'm holding myself up. I could have walked away at any moment, but I just I like <laughs> being in on everything. 
as uh, he looks back at I Crick and kind of just shakes his head, and him and Crick continue on uh, loading things up. And yeah, Manta, what are you doing? Ah, uh, Crux, how we doing? Uh, you know, doing good. You see, he's got a little bit of a pep in his step as he's stomping around. We got, you know, less than or about ten days left to travel till we get to Doom Space. And once we're there, we can get the Bald Space where we are. We can figure out where exactly to get to our rune from there, and get to Warwick and onto the Axis space. You have a, and I don't really expect you to have like an exact answer, but I'm just looking for like any guidance on. Any idea on how long the light is Araxis, uh, is kind of, pretty much, how, how, how many days do you think we have to get to the light is Araxis before Oral is kind of, uh, lit, you know? Yeah, 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 uh, absolutely. I, I know Princess Zadali said that it seems like there's quite some time, uh, maybe a, uh, another month or two of time at least is, is what she made it sound like. At least, uh, you know, it's, it's slowly. I don't want to get into crude details or anything, but diminishing your guys' playing it, sucking off all the energy. Wait, wait, don't take that the wrong way. Um, you're siphoning the energy and uh, sending it back to uh, Zaraxa space to help, as she says, like kind of uh, power their their star system or whatever. It's the details don't matter to me. I just want to. Them damn astral elves. Oh, I hear you. And once this conversation hmm. kind of subsides, I'm thinking uh, you and I get a little practice. I still need a little help with uh, this gun. Like I said, I I help you with the confidence. You help me with the uh, the sharp shooting, my friend. Um, the reason I ask about the light is Rexus. Um, and I don't know how keen you are with uh, I guess the birth of dragons or wormlings, but um. You know, everyone in our group, um, I had this little vision, um, and it involved, like, the Wormling, like, kind of flying around in dark space with, like, this light trail beam, um, kind of guiding him the way, I guess. Do you think there's any significance to that? Hmm. Uh, you know... Now that you mention it, it does sound kind of somewhat similar to how Princess Ellis was describing them shooting that beam of light or the beam of energy back to their planet or their star, or whatever it is. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that has some sort of connection there, but I mean, that's just me going along with your story and trying to make the connections that I don't know, you asked me to make, but. I think there could be something there. You mean, when you say star, are you referring to the light as Araxis, or maybe, like, its specific, like, area of home? Yeah, no, uh, the, the light itself, probably, yeah, the, the light of Araxis. Okay. I'm not, I can't say with, you know, certainty or anything, but... It sounds, I mean, if you know, a blinding light of sorts and, uh, you know, this powerful source of energy and, yeah, that's kind of starlight. It, it's, it all kind of sounds like on the right path to me. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if anyone were to know, it would be you or anyone on the sh anyone else on the ship. Um, all right, with that being said, you want to get some practice in? <laughs> Let's do it. As, uh, oh, yeah. kind of pats you on the back, and, uh, do you want to actually roleplay this, or do you just want to say that you get some training in? You want to get, you know, uh, say get some roles? I would say we just get some training in. Alright. Just get some training in. Alright, yeah, you get a, a, a solid day's worth of training on your, uh, your, was it a pistol? No, revol uh, revolver. Revolver. Revolver, yep. Yes. Um, so, uh, you got you one day down, you can add that to... Your... So yeah, you guys, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but if you find someone who is like, you know, a proficient enough, uh, trained in certain skills or arts, they could potentially train you guys in those arts as well. It takes 30 days of training and someone who's willing to do that to uh, complete the training. And so 
uh, Manto is on his way to getting some sort of firearm proficiency with that. That's dope. Alrighty, tidy. Oh. As Manto and, and Crux uh, start shooting wildly on the back side of the ship, uh, anyone wants to jump in? Uh, Langston, do you have something that you want to do or anything? Um, I had one thing with everyone talking about, like, where is this, like, parents? How did the egg even end up on Toral? Like, what have you? Um, would there be any way with, like, me kind of learning how to, like, balance everything? Could I just do some type of check to be, like, did the hatching of this trigger, like, somebody or something's, like, wiring to be, like, oh, there's a disturbance in the universe and be, like, how hot are people going to be coming for us now? Is there any way I could get a sense of that or anything? Uh, yeah, go, go ahead and make a... Do. Let's do an Arcana check. And, uh, Luke, I, I also want to make sure it's clear that you know this, or I guess everyone knows this, but like, Xeraxis is the star of their system. So the Yeah, but... Right, right, but... Okay. That is what's... But that is kind of, like, the end goal, that we have to just take out the light, because that's what's feeding the energy to... Um, what's eating Toro, correct? Or did I miss an understanding? Yeah, no, that, that that all sounds right. But yeah, what Princess Zealoth has let you guys know is that she has that ring of shooting stars that she needs to perform a ritual to stop that from occurring, essentially. Right, right, the, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Astral font. Mm hmm. So we gotta get her there. Yes, exactly. Um, so did you roll a, uh, religion, uh, uh nope, check? I, did, I did, I did not want to interfere with the discussion. Oh, good, I appreciate it. Uh, 24. 24. Nice. Um, connecting out your arcane senses to the, uh, astral sea, uh, the astral plane that kind of, you know, the silvery mist that envelops around you guys currently, the place that connects everything to one another, you can't make yourself to other planes, unless you interdimensionally travel, without connecting through the astral sea itself. So there is an innate arcane nature in the weave flowing through here. And as you kind of try to pull on some of the threads and fibers of this uh, so-called weave, uh, trying to see if this hatching of this wormling has caused any sort of ripple effect out, uh, you seem to Let's see, with a 24, I would say that you would notice that they're, you know, like when you were, if you were to yell out in a cave and you hear the echo kind of call back to you, uh, mm -hmm. you feel that kind of resonance uh, okay. responding back. Okay. Word. So, can I, can you... um, since it's a 24, can, can, can I burn a flash of genius to buff him up a little bit and see if anything he gets anything else out of it. Sure, yeah. Can, can you use that on other people? When you are another creature, 30 feet, ability check or saving throw. Cool. Plus yeah. three. Go for it. Yeah, I'd do that and see if he gets anything out of it. Kind of like as he's, as he's standing there, I notice him just kind of concentrating. And as he starts to like fade out, I just kind of like put my hand on his back and it gets just little, like, it's not like an electric jolt, but it's just a warmness that passes through his body. It tunes his senses. So, is, is it a D4 or is it just plus three? It's straight up plus three, so it takes oh. you to uh, Word 27 cool. for the boy, then. Anything new? Um, you get a sense of, uh, as Crick goes over and sends this jolt of energy through you, kind of like almost like an arcane battery it gives you, like, it amplifies your, your energy a bit more. Oh. Um, you get the sense of this radiant energy, uh, almost like there's like a, like a leak in the astral sea kind of pooling and pouring towards you guys, um, in some capacity and just like mm. this kind of, um, this domineering celestial force. Okay. And kind kind of coming towards us, it seemingly uh, from the direction in which you guys are heading, at least. Oh, okay. Cool. I will look down to Crick and be like, "Appreciate that, buddy. You help me get a sense. We're heading towards something big. I don't know what it is. 
but uh yeah we're going right towards it so i guess keep aho on the minds and just know we might have some stuff coming up that sounds good i'm sure we'll be ready i will protect aho with my life i like slam my spear on the ground so seriously <laughs> <laughs> that makes two of us his cuteness is a blessing to the cosmos and I'll just start staring straight ahead for anything that might be coming. <laughs> Crick looks at him with just solid admiration, but looks at his weak armor and just like does like a like a like a minor like muscle pump of his arm is just like Yeah, we got this. And then he walks away. A piece of armor falls off of Langston is like shit he takes it away. <laughs> No one saw it. No one saw it. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Rampu, is there anything that you would want to do uh, close out the day here? Uh, yeah, so ever since I had a talk with Aho, I've been kind of in my head about oh, Nick first. Uh, I'm here. It looks like you're Giggling balls or something in the way it's the screen is so mine up pasted. <laughs> but <laughs> I've been you'll see or rolling dice. <laughs> um whatchamacallit, I've been thinking a lot about my missed memories. And I make it a point to just start concentrating and to see if I can get anything <laughs> back. Uh, so, your what memories are you trying to reach out to? Uh, anything of my background, my mom particularly. <coughs> sure. Uh, go ahead and thing? roll a. Let's do a history check. History. Rollins. Nap 20, motherfucker! I remember everything. <laughs> Alright. Nap 20. Yeah, um... So, your mother, uh... Let's see, remind me. So you have, like, memories of your mother and father, right? I or basically remember, uh... Like an astral explosion almost, and like a battle. And I was, I think, flying on my mother's back essentially as this was happening. And then I kind of remember after that, almost like a fuck, like land before time moment with little foot and the mom dies. <laughs> oh. so, stuff like that. But I don't remember her dying, so I just remember like being sent on my own, almost. Yeah. And then that's kind of it. Um, so, you, let's say that you, yeah, you, you like kind of remember this moment that you had uh, in the past, and you kind of, this flash of radiance and and uh, and just conflict and you just remember seeing, you know, your your mother in, in strife against. You can't make out the image at first as you're watching the battle break out here. Uh, eventually, as you tr push through the clouds and, and the fog of your your memory of your mind, you break through uh, for the first time in your life the images of the enemies that are responsible for the separation for the loss. And the the hardships that you've had to come through from since this moment, essentially, as you notice a a giant ship shaped like a shell with tentacles flying out the back of it, and you notice on the on the edge of the ship that this is this nautiloid like ship. Uh, you notice these tentacle faced creatures uh, with all sorts of strange alien like weaponry and regalia um flying flying beside them um on the backs of these um, strange alien like beasts you see the squid faced mind flayers these elithids 
as they battle and take on uh, your mother. And you w notice, you know, down below you, you see the, the rapid ocean, the vast sea of swords underneath the view. And um, with one last you know, ditch effort, your mother charges up this lightning burst, this energy through her core, and just kind of like an atom bomb, just lets it all out in an instant. And you watch as the ship beside her... <laughs> pieces of it sunders off, flees off of it, and the ship flying out of the sky, hurling down towards the ocean. Your mother, her body almost lifeless in this moment, collapsing down to the um, ocean as well. In the last instant, with the last bit of muscle life force that she could have within her, kind of just enough, gust her wings up to stop the momentum, the force of you guys falling down so quickly, so that as you and her impacted into the ocean, it did not rip you apart like it did her. And you splash down to the depths, flailing around, trying to find your senses until finally, not sure when, it could be moments, an hour, days later, but you wake up and you're on the shore of an island in the Sea of Swords, and from there, you've had to spend your time and wondering where and what, and uh, kind of memory in this moment flashes out again as the fog kind of begins to uh, envelop around the memory and gets blocked out in this moment any further. Fucking epic. Thanks for making me whip that out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing, though. <laughs> I uh, uh, give you inspiration. Thank uh, you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Adder Adderall great. 20. Wait, no, he's going to re-roll a, a D20 for, against <laughs> us. Fuck that. Yeah. That's <laughs> and, uh, you, have, you have D inspiration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as these memories come to me, I... Feel a sense of pride knowing that you know my mom would risk her life to save mine and such an act of badassery but at the same time I can't help but feel a lot of sadness that perhaps has been you know holed up inside of me as I've been hoping secretly that I could one day be reunited her and now knowing that it's most likely never going to happen. Yeah. And a single alligator tear goes down the old <laughs> Rampucci that <laughs> he hopes no one sees. The, the unfortunate truth of it all. Um, don't have many memories of your father, if any, either. And what you know of him, though, is that he was... Um, well, he was a, a, a tricky fellow, and a uh, and quite different from your mother, uh, you know, being a That's halfling. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> an interesting fellow who's made his rounds across uh, Faerun, across the Forgotten Realms. And uh, as your memory, when you sit back here and kind of sit with this sorrow, you know, knowing that this quest or this idea, this fantasy that you had that you might be able to reunite with her uh, seems to be extinguished. Uh, the potential of your father being out there is, is still still looming in your mind. Alright. Love it. Um, with that, you guys, um, anyone need to do anything else to, for, the, for that evening or anything before we call that a night there? Cool. Um, with that, then you guys all find your ways uh, to the your own domiciles. Uh, the lunar dragon still kind of curled up in the room. Uh, Crick placed them, and uh, as Crick walks in, kind of shuffles a little bit, and repositions himself, and then uh, nuzzles back to sleep once again. Um, with nothing else, you guys can all take a long rest. And um, 
Is there anything guys you want to do the next day at all, or shall I fast forward? I know Manto, I assume, continue training each day, correct? Or, yes, Manto. Shooting guns, baby. Bang, bang. <laughs> I'm, I'm good to keep it moving. Yep, cool. Maybe, yep, let's ride. maybe Crick is teaching the little dragon shit as the days go by or something, but other than that. Did you guys, he's in the kitchen, and he has the dragon next to him. <laughs> and he takes a knife and a clove of garlic, and he puts a knife sideways, and he and he cracks the garlic so the stuff comes off. And then he hands a little piece over to the dragon. The dragon looks at him, aho. Then he looks at the at the at the garlic, and he just whams his head right into it, and and the shell peels off. Him. <laughs> He's just so proud. Incredible. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so uh, the day goes on. Aho's head covered in sticky peels. Um, <laughs> so you guys travel on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip it on 10 more days, if that's okay with you all. For me. Yeah, let's do it. Right. Manta, go ahead and use that training. Uh, Mark, that you've done uh, 10 days total. And um, as you guys continue. 10 days total or 10 more days? Uh, sure, but we'll say 11 days total then. Um, so, ba ba bum As you guys are traveling through the Astral Sea, uh, Langston, as you're kind of tethered in and, uh, attuned into the area around you guys, you get that sudden feeling, once again, that you felt 10 days prior uh, but surging much more powerful in this moment. Oh. Um, I will alert the crew just to kind of be like, hey, um, I'm getting a ping. We are coming up on something. Uh, everyone at the ready. Aho, stop headbutting the garlic. Um, and just make everyone aware of what we're coming up to. Um, would I be able to see... I mean, we're kind of in an astral sea. It seems kind of silly, but can I roll a perception check to see, like, if I have any indication of anything? Or, uh, yeah, let's let's do. Uh, you can do our perception, or you can do Arcana to kind of like, you know, same kind of thing, like sense out with the Arcana. Nature. Arcana has the plus one, one more than perception. I will do that. <laughs> I love it. And we're back. That's um, ten. Yeah, ten. As you like, begin to try to sense out. Uh, around here to f feel where this is coming from. You can see, like, the, uh, you know, around you guys, the silvery haze of the Astral Sea. It's beginning to grow a little bit more muted. As you see in the distance, this, like, deepening color emerging. And as you guys are sailing on and flying through here, getting closer to that deepening color, you see this sudden flash of light that just breaks through the void of the astral sea uh, between you guys in that darker space and it grows brighter and larger with each passing second and as you're watching this um, you see this massive massive dragon oh. golden scales glowing with intensity of a thousand suns surging towards you guys oh. It's not quite this close. We'll say it's like uh, 90 feet away from you guys right now. Uh, the air around it, as you guys are approaching, it shimmers with this radiant heat, and you feel its presence, like a like a weight pressing down on your guys' chest, as you see this radiant dragon in the distance, blocking your guys' path. Okay. Yeah. Point to the dragon, and I alert down below to the deck. Hey, turn direction! We got a massive dragon ahead! Do not guys mention... If he feels anything. Don't mention anything about Aho to the dragon. Uh, Crick, what did you say? Um, can I, like, connect with Aho and just be like, hey, do you know this monster? <laughs> like, do you, do, you, do you sense any power? Or is there any kind of does he know you're here kind of thing 
Ahu's eyes are just bright right now, wide as ever, as it just stares off into the distance, and as it tries to formulate words to uh, spit out at you guys, you hear coming from the distance, in in a draconic kind of roar, SURRENDER THE WORMLING! As the voice kind of crackles in your guys' mind, it's cold and unyielding. It is mine to claim. See, with a gust of a, a thrust of its wings, uh, you know, r- very relentless and calculating, it focuses its energy towards you guys as it begins to thrust its way in your guys' direction. And as it's doing that with intent, uh, I'm going to keep it 90 feet away, but we're going to go ahead and roll initiative. Before we do that, with my passive, can I tell like specifically what kind of dragon it is just to make sure if it's like consistent with the type of wormling we have um yeah go uh i would say not with your passive perception I, it would actually be like a uh like a nature check i would need nature okay nature check fuck all right let's try Ooh, net 20. Ooh. Uh, yeah, with its uh, you know radiance and shimmering scales, uh, you can definitely tell that this is a solar dragon. So we have a lunar solar dragon. dragon. Yes. And kind of opposite. I don't know. <laughs> kind of what? Yes. They're kind of opposites. This dragon can suck a dick. With that nature check, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah they, they're not, that's not, you know, daddy. Correct. You would definitely yeah. be a safe assumption. Langston holds up a mirror. Daddy's right here. Come on. You you know who, who is the father of this dragon. That's not him. <laughs> Let me, uh, delete Crux from there. Um, okay. At the top of the combat round, actually, um... Let's get, I guess, I don't want Starbo in this. Starbo's not in this. We'll get... No! <laughs> <laughs> Starbo's asleep. Uh, no, that's we, my boy. He can be up there. No, that's my boy. Uh, we'll get Crux, no, and, Crux and Flinch can be in this if you guys want him to be, but I want to keep it to not like a, a shit ton of you guys having allies, yeah. you know? <laughs> That's fair. Fucking do it. Let's go, guys. All right. Do you guys? Uh, do you guys want the three of them, or can we reduce it down, or keep it there? I'm cool. I got Jake, so I'm happy. I got the spear. Can they Let's just fucking do the damn thing. Right. Yeah. Can they just like work the ballista? We can do that. <laughs> Crocs and Flinch are on the ballista. All right. There you go. Let me add the dragon. And Manto, you are up. Uh, you can also move up to along the party if, if you want to. Let me put on combat music. Oh, and, yeah. And, yeah, you, as it's approaching, as I mentioned, it's like 90 feet away from the ship. What do you do, buddy? Um, uh, I just move off to the side for now. Uh, and the dragon, which is here, because you know I, I can speak draconic. Uh, he was just here and said. <laughs> I'm daddy. And uh, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, do you want to do any sort of bonus actions or anything? Or are you good? Uh, yeah, you know what? Bonus action, I will uh, just take the dodge action. Cool. Um, and real quick, also, while uh, we're doing this, Rampu, I'm not sure if you've chosen a first level spell yet for that feat. You get, it's, a, it's a one time use thing. Um, did you hear me there? <laughs> he took a head vents off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at the perfect listening. time. <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> uh, hilarious. Uh, I think Johnny and Tommy, you guys both got one, right? Yep, mm-hmm. I took. Um... You, what did oh. I? Oh, I thought good. I did. Uh, Actually, I didn't take one. Yes, we did. With the revolver, so it says 120 feet. So between between 40 and 120 feet, is that disadvantage or correct? Again. Sorry, Correct. Yeah, forty feet is a straight roll. Up to one twenty feet is disadvantage. Sure. So yeah, you could take it to disadvantage shot at him if you want. Yeah, we might as well try. I will also remind you if you wanted to, potentially in the future, you could use the steady aim bonus action 
to give yourself advantage, which would then flatten that roll out. But you do you. Oh, very cool. This whole gun thing is new to me. Wait till you have to reload. Um, a 17. Well, it strays wide as you watch as these, with your now passive perception manto, you watch as these golden uh, rune-like sigils illuminate on, you know, on the etch or on the insides of his wings, after that bullet goes flying on by. Interesting. Okay, uh, that'll bring us to the dragon now, ninety feet away. Uh, flies up sixty feet with its regular movement, and as you guys saw, the shimmering field of of radiant heat, uh, just emanating all around it, that energy gets focused into the core of it as it shoots up through its neck, and you watch as the light shines out of its mouth with this radiant energy. It shoots out almost like a like a missile of light from its mouth, which lands right in between all of you guys, and as it does, you watch an explosion of radiance uh, blows up right there. I'll go ahead and put a circle for you guys. Yeah, oh. all you guys. It's a 20-foot circle. I need a um, con save from everyone. Con Does save. my dodge action help with this? Or not with uh, spells, right? I don't think it's with con Aho saves. With yeah, I think it does with dex saves, but not con. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make this a lucky, so I'm going to give myself advantage. Okay. 26 and 18. Lo Aho learning. He's learning. Ooh, 24. Well, I'm going to use my inspiration. <laughs> I use my inspiration to reroll that. Oh, Langston with a four? Yeah. 13. Oh, fuck, wait. I forgot we got inspiration for, um. Yeah, if you want to use for the that, ritual. Yeah, I will. I will burn that to reroll mine as well. Love and eight. It. Okay. We are. We are consistently subpar, boys. We are back in the sack. <laughs> Whatever you got. You oh, guys my. hear this booming explosion radiate out there. As if you failed, you take 40 points of uh, radiant damage. Um, Crick. What did stuff fail? Uh, you failed and Langston failed. Uh, did Jake roll? Yeah, Jake. Uh, yeah. No, Jake has to roll. And no, I'm going to use a reaction to lower that damage. But I mean, Joe. Okay. And Jake. if you've succeeded, so uh, Crick, uh, Aho, and Manto, Ooh, uh, you guys take half damage. Uh, Jake takes 40 damage. What's he have? He has 40 health. Yeah, so Jake, in an instant, uh, radiance just poof, explodes out here, and Jake vanishes out of thin air as he dies. I'm gonna give myself the. I'm gonna use my reaction, the gift of the chromatic dragon. So when I I took fire damage. I can use my reaction to get myself resistance. It's radiant damage. Oh, uh, fuck. Never mind then. Uh, yeah. So, uh. So annoying. Every other type of fucking damage that radiance in that. It's so stupid. It's because it's, they're all draconic energies, and typically these aren't, uh, in standard rules. Um, these aren't chromatic yes, dragons. Exactly. These just hurt. Um, Fuck so 20 damage to Crick, Manto, and Aho. Um, uh, can yep. you do Aho? I can't change yep, his I got that. health. Um, Crick, do you have a reaction or anything that you... Or Manto, do you have a reaction or anything you want to use? Um, That was his turn. Yeah, I guess I will uncanny... Can I uncanny dodge a... That? Uh, uncanny dodge, I believe, is for... Dex attack. saves, right? Or attack it just rolls? Says a, it just says attack. You do have another ability, what is called. Um... Evasion. Oh no, that's that's for deck saves. Yeah, no. So actually, that hits you with an attack roll. Yeah, no. So actually, yeah, you can't uh, negate any of that. I apologize. Yeah, I didn't think I could. Um. Okay. With that, as they approach closer and closer, uh, showing their sheer power with that one massive explosion, Rampu, you are up. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna first things first. I'm gonna hunter's mark bonus action on the dragon, obviously. Okay. And I'm going to take a shot with my longbow. 
And yes. Twenty-five, I'm assuming hits. Oops. Uh yeah, twenty-five definitely hits. Okay. That plus that. Nice. Fifteen damage. 15 I'm gonna damage. shoot again. Thirteen. Can I lucky? Yeah, I guess I should. Not, never mind. I, I should have said that before. No. All good. Uh, anything else for you? That is it. Okay. Actually, um, I'm gonna move back behind the crowd a bit. <laughs> sure. I'm kind of the only. <laughs> that is fair. All right. And then that'll be my turn. Flinch and Crux are up now with a ballista loaded on in there. Crux goes to aim it, and Flinch goes to fire. Uh, you see, Flinch is literally shaking as he's doing this. Uh, poof, bolt goes flying into the air. Uh, just goes through the branches and leaves of Starbo, and Starbo screams back, Hey, what the hell, guys? And uh, that is <coughs> a miss for them. Uh, and... Oh, sorry, Crick, you were up now. Uh, is he, like, standing on, like, the point of the ship? No, he's flying in the air. In the air. Hmm. How far, like, far up, I guess? No, it would just, it would probably be, like, maybe 30 feet. A lot in elevation. Okay. Okay. Um, I will turn to Oho and say, go get in a safe place. It's Aho. I'm Oh, it's I. Ah, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, ah. And then I'm going to move up my 30 feet in front of everyone. I am going to... You know what? I am going to... If I understand space correctly, so if I, like, teleport on him and I get shaken off or whatever, I, like would like float to the ground right you would float down to the gravity plane of the ship which is the center horizontal of the ship yeah, yeah. okay so okay. imagine like so the I ship just... is in water that you can't <clears throat> see uh you know it'd be like you're like on the water level essentially okay all right um yeah one second thought i'm just gonna go up 30 feet and then i am going to blast him with a magic, we're not gonna. I'm gonna shoot him with a crossbow. Okay. Uh, forty-five feet away. Forty. Yep. Okay. Yeah, eighty's normal, so I can do one. Eighteen. Uh, eighteen will hit. All right, and the second one, twelve will miss. There's my damage, and then for my bonus action defense matrix okay yeah as you shoot him with the first crossbow shot you watch as it pierces through some of his glimmering scales as the second shot goes to approach him you watch as the golden runes on his wings illuminate and almost pushes the arrow away and anything else for you i can't like are the runes giving him extra protection like do i think they can be damaged Make an Arcana check. The 14. Uh, you recognize that... Actually, let me see for Crick real quick. Um, it seems, you know, that there seems to be some sort of protection nature to them, certainly. Uh... But these also seem to be written in like a language, but not one that you can make out. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, that's it. All right, Langston. Woo. Um, question. You mentioned the thing that the dragon did to us last time. Was that like its breath that it ripped and it just shot it and it landed on the Correct. on the boat and just? <laughs> okay. Cool. Um. It's photonic Unconventional breath. breath weapon? Yeah, it's heard. really cool. Um, it, 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 it blossoms out after you shoot it in an area. It's really fucking badass. <laughs> Fantastic. Let me see one thing real quick. Um, within range. Okay. 
So I think what Langston is going to do for this turn um, is, let me, hold on, let me do some stuff real quick. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. 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 So what I am going to do is I am going to move back underneath Starbo's um, trees here. I think like here. Let me see if that, can I move here? Oh, I'm still on ruler. Whoopsies. I'm going to move back five feet to here. Let me double check something. Um, beautiful. And then I am going to cast a Beacon of Hope on everybody. So with that, if there's any um, any uh, Wisdom saving throw or Death saving throw, you have advantage. Um, and then anytime I heal you, you would get the or any healing done, you get the max number of hit points. So everyone has that. So um, within this, um, I'm going to throw it on. Or no? it, it is concentration. Yes. Okay. That's um, every time you heal us, or any any healing time you receive any healing, let me and regains the maximum number of hit points possible from any healing. Um, so I would throw that on everybody, um, and then uh, for my bonus action, let me see something real quick. Beep. I don't think I have any potions. Oh, I don't have any potions. Whoops. That is a whoopsies. Then for bonus action, I think I'm just gonna activate. Um, Radiant Purity with the Cellar Lance and just have it get ready to deal an additional D6 of Radiant Damage. Um, whenever I throw it. Alright. So, um, I'll, you'll just see me go back, I'll, like, aim as well everybody, <clears throat> and I just clench my spear real hard, and I'm just like... Uh, <laughs> as, as, be good, don't worry. As you're <laughs> doing that, roll an Arcana check for me real quick. Sure. Whoop. 15, right in the middle. Right in the middle, indeed, and what I was looking for. As you grab that lancing, you think about the radiant energy that you can pour through this to uh, attack him, you know, this extra an uh, damaging energy. You realize in a moment, you're like, shit, that was radiance that he just attacked us with. Oh, it sure was, wasn't it? Huh, how about that? Hindsight's a beautiful thing. Langston turns it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say the, like, you, you gather this as you're about to do it if you want to do some, a different bonus action. I don't know if I do have anything else fun I could do. Um, I mean, the other thing is a spell, which I can't do two spells at once, as cool as it would be. Um, yeah. Dang, do I have anything in my inventory I can do? That's an action. Nah, shit. Um, All good. Could I use the rest of my movement? Does anyone have a potion I could, like, apply to? Because we can do potions as a bonus action, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Rampu, do you have a potion? Or Manto? Me. Whomever? Yes. I'll just run over. I'll just run yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, since, with all due respect, Manto, Rampu is a little more banged up. I'll just uh, give it to Rampu as a bonus action, then he gets full points from the Beacon of Hope. Hey. So, whatever um, the... Selfless. Didn't Rampu just say he had one? Yeah, yeah that's I what I'm see. saying. I ran over, I took Rampu's and gave it to Rampu. Oh, Did I, I say see. Manto? Wait, hold on. Hold so on, so hold he on, is feeding on, Rampu his, 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 his own potion. Yeah, yeah, he's feeding my own potion. Oh, okay. Don't worry about your inventory. <laughs> you're good. Yeah, you're good. Sorry about that. That's, that's my fault. The name's yeah, both I, I, O and I just get tangled sometimes. Uh, like I that. thought he was going to try and... Um, heal himself and i was like oh no 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 that's actually hugely helpful because i had a potion of greater healing so 4d4 plus 4 so, so you 20 get 20 total, back which is fucking huge so, so and as and you guys are I, yep go on i was gonna say i think i used five feet back 10 feet over and then i'll use um my remaining to move back over so i'm a little bit away from them and like kind of towards the edge of the ship here cool uh, so I'll, I'll cast that, run over, throw a potion down his throat, jazz hands, and then run back <laughs> over. I, I love the cleric selflessness. Go ahead and take inspiration for that, because you Ooh. are hurting more than him, and for you to turn on him instead, that's very kind. Um, Starbo up now. Uh, My boy! <laughs> just bouncing on a rock in his hands, feeling the weight of it, as he's just eyeing up this dragon in the distance. Um, I think it's going to be disadvantage. It is. Um, he's just trying to figure out like, how exactly he needs to throw this thing as finally he just whoosh, launches it in the air. Boom! A little cheese on it, smacks it right, right in, the, in the center. Uh, incredible. As he does, 
38 points of bludgeoning damage <laughs> to this dragon. Boom, you watch it kind of tumble in the air for a second, has to readjust itself, flapping its wings. You see the radiance glimmering off of its um, off of its scales, and that brings us to Manto, at the top of the round. All right. Uh, I would run 15 feet to uh, Langston and give him my uh, regular potion of healing. Oh, you're a gentleman in the Scala. Oh, my God. Yep. What, what is, is that? Uh, 2d4 plus 2. I'm not feeding it to you. I'm handing it to you, so I don't know if you're allowed to take it. Oh. But when you if get it's... mounts, I, I be... would. 10, 10 healing once you decide to use it. Okay. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. And then, uh, I would, uh, then move up a little closer. There we go. Beautiful. Um, and then, yeah, I missed the revolver shots. I'm like, all right, let's go with your old trusty psychic blade here. Twenty-two to hit. Trusty indeed. Twenty-two flies through the air and hits them directly. Okay, yeah. And then, oh yeah, five damage. Nice. And then bonus action with advantage, psychic blade. Oh yeah, twenty-four. We're feeling it. That'll hit. With, oh uh, there we go, eight damage, and then sneak attack. 11. Nice. Solid. Uh, as your blade goes flying, both blades go flying through the air, connects through its form as they dissolve into it. You watch as its head kind of wretches to the side, this psychic agony uh, torturing it. It once again kind of loses its flight pattern, uh, readjusts itself, and you see the golden fire and its eyes burning bright now. That is my turn. All right. And with that, Manto, uh, he goes flying on down uh, up to Crick on your level, Crick. Um, and um, yes. I'm going to have Warding Flare prepared just in case. Okay. For a potential disadvantage. Uh, so, Warding Flare is technically like, it, I have to, you have to call that before the roll is made, right? Correct. So, that so is I'll the go language. Ahead and roll it now with disadvantage if that's what you're doing. Yes. All right. You watch us dragon flying down its small open wide uh, ready to chomp down on crick well let's to the center of him right there um disadvantage he goes to chomp down hey. on him <laughs> ends up getting a, a bit of the uh dinghy boat in the front instead and actually he wouldn't he would be 10 feet away from you not right on you five feet and as that bite misses he kind of dives down into the boat right there uh his tail whips around and uh, tries to strike into you as well. And with three on the dice, that yeah. is going to miss. Uh, with a bit of rage, that you feel that heat coming off of its body now, Crick. Uh, let's see. You see the light trying to shine up through its, its core. It kind of dims back down, doesn't fully uh, illuminate it. And he flies back up into the air right here uh another 30 feet finishing his movement and that brings us to rampu oh um before you go rampu i'm sorry Crick, give yourself 15 uh temp hp because you get max from warding flare all right that overrides what i get so i'll Correct. take that sorry about that not good love it yeah it's time for the poo um <laughs> let's see i'm gonna go ahead I'm going to use my gift of chromatic dragon. That's bonus action. So that's one D4. Okay. And then I'm going to take two more shots at this biatch. Go for it. I'm going to lucky the first one. Okay. So I have advantage. Let's see what I got here. 13 going to miss, God unfortunately. <laughs> Um, fuck it, I'll lucky the second one. And I believe my last lucky. 
Yes. 16. 16's gonna miss as you watch this. The, the runes on his wings etched in there illuminate with that one. And almost like a gravity field, the arrow just kind of falls down and does not connect. And that is it for me. Alright. Uh, unfortunately, let's see. We got Flinch and Crux. Uh, Crux throws a bolt into the ballista as... Uh, as Flinch is aiming it, and they are ready to fire it on the next round. Uh, Crick, you are up. Crick looks up at the dragon. I'd run from Mama too. As I start to start running forward, and I just kind of disappear into a jade, and I appear right on its back as I misty step um, up to it, and just kind of like grab it around the neck, and I start just like punching it in the kidneys. <laughs> Top of hell yes. <laughs> in a silvery <laughs> mist, you guys watch as Crick disappears and appears instantly above the dragon on its back, pounding down at it. Um, yeah, let's, yeah, let's see what you get. Squad one. 17. I will D4 that to an 18. To an 18. That will hit. Alright, and then the second one. 23. 23 hits. So 11, nice. And another Ooh. 11, nice. Nice. And now it's got disadvantage on everybody but me. I love that, Crick. As you teleport yourself onto the back of the dragon, it had not a single iota of a clue that you were about to do this, and you catch it by a surprise. You start pounding on its flesh. You feel the heat going up through your body as well, but you're just pummeling into it as you feel the, the muscle weaken underneath each one of these uh, these punches. Uh, you have definitely have put a hurt on it, and this thing seems weakened right now. I can only do that once from the... Uh, Correct, yes. The... Uh... Yep. Okay, so that's done, and I can't, like, cast it normally anymore, right? Correct. All right. Perfect. Yeah, so you guys all have that misty step one-time use, as a reminder. That's what Crick just used. Yeah. All right. Love it. Uh, you can go... Uh, you already have inspiration? That sucks. I'm already inspired. Uh, Langston, you're up. <laughs> um, you start using so, it. So, yeah. Langston will, like hold his spear back ready to throw it and then like stops he's like oh right and then he spikes it in the ground and then just channels the scarf and i will do um i will do toll of the dead on this dragon um so i don't know how wise dragons are but dc 14 wisdom saving throw okay let's see it that's a 20 total Pretty fucking wise. All right, that was futile as fuck. Well, <laughs> Langston's like, I had a feeling that would happen, and he'll just rub his hands Slice. together and then <laughs> just like blow stardust into the air. And I will do a mass healing word on um, pretty much everybody around me because I can do up to six creatures. So I'll do us four. Um, I will do uh, Aho, and then. Uh, yeah, I think those are the, that's everyone who needs it. So everyone gets, um, what is it, uh, 2d4 plus 3. So everyone gets back um, 11. Beautiful. Very nice. Okay. I think that's all I can do with that. So. Not bad. Langston is now just like, okay, you guys got this thing. I'm just going to sustain. <laughs> just like curls up in a little ball to the side, like looking over his shoulder. Like, <laughs> is it still there? <laughs> <laughs> the Starbo reaches down with a branch and grabs another one of these boulders. It lifts it up into the air and sees Crick on the back of the dragon. He's like trying to figure out how to aim this exactly. He goes and tosses it in that direction. He starts to just chuckle to himself. You guys feel the ship kind of shake as he's, the laughing of his body reverberates the ship deck. Uh, going through the, the trunk and through the roots and everything as the rock just smashes into uh, the dragon. Uh, let's see how much damage. 31 points of damage. And, oh my god. And Starbo's looks around and is like, Shit, I'm out of rocks. And <laughs> that is his turn. Manto, you're up. Okay. Um, we're going to go back to the revolver. 
with advantage because my last roll was uh, a hit with the psychic blade, so my vex should work on my revolver. Fuck. That's so tough. <laughs> Rough. God. Sorry. That's okay. Um. Yeah, the, am the, I the able runes to? Runes illuminate with this one as, as well, and you guys watch as the psychic blade or the the shot from the revolvers almost stops in the middle of the air and poof, drops down to the ground. There's nothing that says I can't use psychic blade as a bonus action because I use revolver, right? I think you have to use the psychic blade action to use a psychic blade bonus action. Gotcha. Okay. <coughs> um, he already, I already have, he already has disadvantage on us. So. Um, I guess that's my turn. All right. Let me just make sure that that is fully right. I think it is. After you attack with the blade on your turn, you can make a melee or ranged attack with a second psychic blade. Yeah, it's the last paragraph here. Okay. Uh, Mantu shot goes uh, missing as these runes illuminate and seem to stop it from contacting with him. Um, Crick on the back of the dragon. Now he flies up into the air wildly. Uh, straight up into the air. Uh, as he's doing this, you can see this radiant energy blooming up out of its uh, throat. Um, it doesn't seem to reach its full uh, potential, but it doesn't stop the dragon from hurling itself into <laughs> into the astral sea as it takes you on up, and you watch his, its body just kind of whips wildly into the air. I'm going to make a strength check. Um, and you're oh going to have to make a dex saving throw uh, or strength saving throw to see if you can hold on. Uh, that's a 24 that you need to beat. Uh, let's see. 19. Hold on. Hold on. 19. I will, because uh, whatchamacallit, Blast of Genius does not take a reaction okay. or anything. So that takes me to 22. And then I can built for success which again is no action so 22 plus one fuck i will can i inspiration my d4 you can oh it's a night or you can inspiration the deck save is what you can do so you need to get higher you need to get one more than yeah, you got to, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on your deck save. Yeah, I need to get that 20 on deck save. <laughs> no, no, it's an 18, 19, or 20. Because you rolled a 17. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'll do that. So you have a 15% chance. <laughs> <laughs> so, the opposite direction. Um, as Crick, you try to grab onto the dragon's uh, the scaly form as it wildly whips you in the air. You go flying... Uh, out of its uh, its area, launching downward straight to the deck. Boom! Your body collapses uh, onto the exo. So he was he started 30 feet. So actually, I can go 90 feet up into the air. So that's what he would have done. Um, as your body just flies down to the ground, it falls 500 feet per round. So you take uh, 9d6 damage. <laughs> body like a rock tumbles into the the ship's deck you take 27 bludgeoning damage i rolled so low on that uh two ones <laughs> three twos uh you, your body bruised and scuffed up uh, a couple of your wire and circuitry exposed but still alive in this moment um i will say i'll say that that was his action um Yeah, that was its action. It's 90 feet up in the air now. You've watched its radiance kind of glimmering off of it still. Uh, Rampu, you are up now. 90 feet up. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take another shot at this biatch. Oh, uh, Crick, you're prone also. Oh, I know. 
<laughs> but wait, there's more. Crix is just standing there resilient <laughs> after that. Just never bent the knees. <laughs> yeah. Straight up and down. Like a cat. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot. Let's do it. Malombo. Fifteen will not hit, I remember, right? Fifteen will not hit, unfortunately. Okay, I'm gonna shoot again. Fuck, man, that one. What is yeah. happening? Um. And bonus action. Can I do anything? No, not really. Um. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> rough. The Fuck dice. Man, the dice awful. gods hate you tonight. Apparently. Yeah, oh, man. This is awful. Yeah, it'd be like that sometimes, unfortunately. Um. All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Flinch and Crux up now with the ballista pointed in that direction. They let off the shot. Uh, 120 feet is fine. <laughs> Goes wide, and Flinch and Crux just smack each other. Like, what the hell? What was wrong with that? Flinch, like, what do you mean? You're the one that was aiming it. I just pulled the trigger. And, uh, and they yell at each other and get another bolt in there. And that is that for them. Crick, you're up, but you're down. This isn't the same. This is a, this isn't the same turn, right? This Not is the same round. It's the same round uh, as okay. Solar Dragon okay. Attack. Yeah. Oh. Okay, but not but not the current turn. Okay. Because mm -hmm. um, I was gonna tell him, but mm -hmm. I kind of everybody sees me like boom. I just kind of like sit up Undertaker style, and I stand up, use half my speed. I walk gently underneath of the dragon, and I look up and I go, I told you, you can't run from Mama. As I jump like a foot off, like as I jump as high as I can, and then you see um, the big beetle kind of emerge from my back again, <laughs> rip me apart, and like shoots right up to like the legs of this dragon and just reassembles me holding on to one of the uh, to one of the dragon legs. Right, what is that? <laughs> that is um uh, that is <laughs> vortex warp. So vortex warp like it works I think like you go back fifteen can... feet on the place yeah, you it's your a turn. Spell. A different thing. It's a hero. Uh, so I'm it's thinking the wolf. boots of the winding path. That's probably what I'm thinking. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Alright. Let's do Can it then. That? Yeah, it says it has to be on a surface, but I think ah. that's that's fine. We'll, we'll roll with that. Yeah, it's the dragon's a surface. Yeah, yeah. So Just the like dragon is a solid. <laughs> <laughs> and then with my bonus action, he just he basically just feels this like big weight like a like a uh, like one of those ball and chains just kind of grab onto his ankle and then he just feels this warmness as, as my uh, uh, defense matrix goes off. Very nice. He's got a wife attached to him and uh... <laughs> got an old ball and chain. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? That's it. Alright, Langston. Oh boy. Um... You see Crick dangling on to the dragon 90 feet in the air. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so 90 feet is the distance shit. That's crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, hold that's on, why I do jumps first. Yeah. <laughs> that changes things. He's 90 feet away from me. Okay, well, correct. that will um, change what I was going to do a little bit. Um, for Divine Spark, um, can I aim it at myself? It says a creature I can see. Um, would that apply to me, or does that mean it has to be anybody else? Uh, I think that's probably fine. Uh, okay, um, divine spark, whatever that is. You're good. It's traits. part of my channel divinity. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, it might not be under feature traits. Um, for some reason, it's only in like. Oh no, there it is. Wait, no. Uh, it's only in actions for some reason for me. Okay, cool. But so, if I could, I'd like to use my action to do a charge of that to myself. Um, for the two d eight plus three, so I'll take back nineteen for that since we still got beacon of hope running. Um, and then bonus action, because he's 90 feet up and it can reach, I will, um, 
second level healing word crick because he just got swanton bombed by a fucking solar dragon <laughs> and he went back up for a second helping well it actually took only my temp hit point <laughs> so well, it didn't actually touch my stuff that's funny I'll so wait do, are you i mean i have i have uh, what's it say 52 59 health yeah so i mean i think I you are arguably it. the most hurt and in the most risk of being yeah. hurt so Let's i will do still do that and give you um you get 19 back 44 plus 3 so damn i am full health pretty much and so awesome. you'll just see langston the healing word is give him the business with a question mark because <laughs> you went back up and I'm just gonna start just clawing at this guy's ankles, <laughs> and I will just uh, hold down here and just be like, "All right, well, stand the fight, everybody." Like since K Rain to pass out Gatorades to people. <laughs> <laughs> Starbo is like place. feeling around on the deck. No, seriously, guys, Manta, you're up. Oh shit! <laughs> it actually doesn't have any rocks. <laughs> All right. Um. I am going to. Let me see if this will work. I'm going to jump straight up, and then from that point, I'm going to misty step 30 feet straight up. And uh, per navigating the astral plane rules, I should be able to just hover there solely by thinking about hovering. So 35 feet up. I'm just kind of chilling. Does that... Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, all right. So you're 30 so feet up. So now I'm only... Yeah. So... Um, so now... Uh, I can... Throw a psychic blade at him. Right. Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, Hell yeah. Crick, you watch this little ethereal blade goes whizzing by you. Nine damage, and then bonus action psychic blade with advantage. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, you know, can I inspiration that? Sure. You roll it one more time. All right. All right. All right. Fuck yeah. Damn. There you go. Spend that inspiration right. and yep. Yep. Thirdly. Seven. And then... Um... I am going to... Sneak attack, but I'm going to do 3d6 damage and spend... Uh, use the 1dc as... Um, trip. So he has to make a deck saving throw or fall prone. DC 15. Okay. Let's see. Oh, there's the sneak attack damage. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so let me apply that damage. As um, as you throw this psychic blade up, how, yeah, go describe, how does this like rack his mind or whatever in such a way that it drives him to drop? Yeah, so I guess he would just kind of see this little, like, bright green dude just, like, <laughs> go from the, uh, like, the, the base of the, the boat, or the airship, to just chilling, like, hovering in air. Almost kind of, like, in this zen sort of, uh, stage. And as he's just kind of sitting there, like, hovering 30 feet up, he, he his, his, he feels a sharp pain in his head as this like psychic blade just kind of blast into him and then with the second one that hits him his whole body just kind of like locks up um almost as like a state of paralysis um and so i'm really banking on him just kind of falling down to the bottom of the hitting hitting the ship watch as his body with crick attached to it goes flying on down to the ground um uh, like almost like it's uh dead weight and crack you feel this like an anchor pulling you down heavily uh man to go ahead and roll 96 crick i need you to roll a deck saving throw mm -mm. it's uh, gonna be a 15 his dc 
21. Nice. You'll, uh, you'll take half of this. I'm still kind of moving. That's yeah. Right. There we, we go. go. 38. 38. As the dragon boom, pummels down to the ship, it, without a doubt, creates a crater in the ship, in the front there. Uh, you guys see uh, pieces of planks of wood, sunders and, and splinters up into the air, uh, becoming part of the astral sea itself. Crick, in the last moment, how do you nimbly escape this? You still take a little bit of damage, but how do you nimbly get away from this? So I'm like, um, I'm basically just, just on his back, and as we go down, I see his wing, and it's like, I curl myself up in his wing. <laughs> I just kind of like cocoon myself. Well, and I still take a look, Ugh! but like I don't get all the, the it, it's a softer landing. Absolutely, for sure. Uh, Manto, nice. Anything else that you want to do? Uh, yeah, Crocs are just here in his head. We'll take care of the damage. <laughs> and that's my thing. <laughs> you, you hear like a, like a, <gasps> in your head, like, oh, I don't mean to let you down. Uh, the solar dragon, <laughs> uh, you see its wings kind of arching back and creaking up as it pulls itself out of this sundered mess. Uh, it's no longer prone. Uh, but seeing, you guys see its runes kind of dimming out on its wings, uh, and it's clearly beaten up, uh, cuts and gashes, and and been torn up, uh, you know, from you guys. In this you moment, forgot, I have a job interview tomorrow. Oh, do you? <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. I, I was <laughs> muted myself, and I totally unmuted myself. <laughs> I forgot, too. <laughs> um, in this moment, Whoops. with uh, Crick kind of curled up, uh, or kind of just collapsed out of its wing area onto the ship deck, uh, the dragon pushes itself off of the ship, and you watch as this, with one big flap of its wings, it lifts up to the air. Um, it's going to use the dash action as it flies, uh, we'll say, just 60 feet straight back. And that is going to be his turn. Rampu, you are up. Actually, All right. yeah, yeah, that is his turn. Yep. Let's see if I can change gods as well. And I'm going <laughs> to take a shot again with my longbow. Let it hit. 21! Yeah, buddy. 21 right hits. And I'm going to go ahead and bonus action. Wait for it. Wait for it. Hail of Thorns here. Yeah. Ooh. So I got to make it deck save, right? Yep, 13. Okay. Ooh, 25. I'll every barbs that. Half. Okay. But uh, you still get half. You still, you still take half, yeah. Okay. Let's see. So 16 let was what the second save was. But let me... Yeah, you need a 13, which is fine. Okay. Um, well, so I damage this. 7 plus uh, that. Plus that. Plus mm -hmm. that. <laughs> half of that. Half of that. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's so that's half of that. that nine plus three is twelve plus half of nine four. is four, so sixteen total. Uh, yep. nice. Um, did you? And that's my first that's attack. First so yeah. I'm gonna attack twice. Go for it. Ooh. I'm gonna go again. Can I um use the silvery barbs um in at or ten. advantage to give to Rampu for this attack? Absolutely. Yeah, Roll again, buddy. Thank God. Let's go again. <laughs> Next <Nice> 20! <laughs> oh, you are a king among <laughs> men! Next 20. Oh, feels so God. good. Incredible. Feels so good. Oh. Incredible. So, oh, that's about to be so much damage. So you got that. That's 18. Plus. Da -da 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 -da. Boom. Plus nine more is twenty-seven. Plus six more is thirty-three. And I think the hail of thorns only hell. goes to that first one, but thirty-three is still right. enough for Rampu to tell me how he does it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, 
I take a shot. I'm so mad that I keep missing. Yeah. Shot after shot after shot after shot. So finally, I load up two, and I'm ready. See, I hit him with the first one. And then I pull up the second one, and I wind back, and I say, Hey, dragon! And it turns over to me like, huh? <laughs> I'll say, Crick's the mama, bitch. And I release an arrow, <laughs> and it literally, just all the damage, all the power and shit behind it, just focused on this arrow, and it just hits this dragon straight through the fucking neck. And you can see, like, it's like energy and whatever fire and all this shit coming out of the hole and like, <laughs> as it just falls off into the nothingness. Yeah, along with that like radiant energy that's pluming off of it. And yeah, you watch as it, it kind of just downward descends out of this space as you know there's no there's nothing left to keep it aloft. You watch as this golden like hide and scales kind of trails behind it like stardust. Just leaving a wake behind it. Yeah. Can I cast? Oh, because it's it's falling in the in the world, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Can I cast vortex warp before? Can I like run to the end of this thing, cast vortex warp, and teleport it onto the ship? Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Crick? <laughs> Um, Dinner time. Yeah. <laughs> this seems cannibalistic to some degree, right? Like something, something's got to give you. Let's hey, see. alligators eat alligators <clears throat> all the time. That's cool. Is that um, a thing? Yeah, they do. I have no idea. Roll a, uh, roll a general dex check, Crick. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Deucey deuce. <laughs> uh, so you, as you see this thing falling, you quickly run to the end of the ship. You actually start tiptoeing along the the point at the end there. And what do you do? So, like, as I'm as I'm running, you guys see all these um, uh, like nanobots, like little beetles, just start coming off the back of my armor. Kind of like, do you know that frog that keeps its babies in its back? And they like bubble up in the yeah. Amazon, like that's kind of happening. And they all rush to the dragon, and you see them like pulling it apart piece by piece. And like traditionally, you you guys have seen this where they like then fly off and put it back together. And they actually are just flying back to the ship and just placing this like this dragon like like one wing is just by itself, the other wing is by itself, and it's in like anatomical pieces. And they don't put it back together because no need to. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, you got this glimmering parts of a radiant uh, solar dragon on the ship deck here. After killing it, after it found its way to your guys' ship, somehow, some way, and seemingly knowing like what you guys had on board the the lunar dragon wormling that just hatched. Crick just kind of walks over and goes, I told you, you can't run from Mama. As he kind of, like, kicks it. <laughs> so you kick it. You see a couple more. Oh, there's, like, little, like, glimmering, like, scales kind of fall off of its body onto the ship deck. Yeah, I, I would I would start investigating its wings and, the, and that kind of, what what's going on with that. Yeah, go ahead and uh, make an Arcana check for me, if you'd like. Anyone else doing anything or contributing to this, helping or whatever? I think I can. I just give him the help action um, yeah, sure. while he's doing this, just because of like the radiance associated with the dragon, and just you know, that would make sense. Especially, um, actually, I, I will say instead of that, um, like advantage or whatever, uh, with that seventeen. Um, Crick, you can kind of like use like your like ability in well, Langston will kind of use like that kind of similar ability. So like a D four on that Langston instead. Okay. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to uh, slice off a big, big patch of the dragon skin, given that it's a uh, fully grown one, and I can maybe potentially make a little cover 
so we can protect our baby dragon uh, from damage. I love that. Um, go ahead and you can roll me a nature or survival. Uh, let's do survival, actually, Rampil. Um, Crick and Langston, you guys reeling this over. Oh, very wow. nice, very nice. Uh, Langston, you help identify as, as you see Crick looking over and you're like, oh, you recognize that the sigils, the runes in engraved on them are of ancient elvish kind of descent. Oh. oh. And you guys are able to piece together after recognizing them that they seem to be some sort of protective uh, sigils of you know whatever celestial powers and that they were helping protect this dragon against uh, you know unwanted dangers. Uh, helping give it kind of like a um, boosted armor. Um, yeah. With... Huh. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, is there a way to kind of like re-enchant these runes or like repurpose them that we could gather from that? It seems like they needed like a, a vessel, uh, a living creature to just kind of source the energy from uh, you guys like roll 20 all together it looks like yeah so um, yeah that's like what you're able to piece together and that you know they are going to be dormant and remain that way okay. uh, you know being that the dragon mm. is dead word hmm. um, Langston copies the runes that were used um, and might try his hand at investigating these later and like studying them to be like is there anything potentially that could be done Go ahead and roll a Arcana check for me as well as you go to copy those. And sure. Um, let's see. I love it. Uh, with precision and confidence, you sit there taking your time painstakingly, drawing over each one of these and making sure that you get the shapes in each arch and curve uh, ever so correct. And while this is going on, beside you, you're <laughs> hacking, carving away as Rampu is is making the best of what he has to hack away at this dragon and, and produce some of its scales and flesh to use later on. Uh, you do get some of its scales, uh, Rampu, that seem um, usable, craftable um, in some capacity. Say that, like, you get, uh, we'll say you get five total. Like, like large scales that are like solid and then once I get them I look at Crick as I know he's pretty good at putting things together and Langston so you guys wanna figure out a way to turn this into what I'm thinking we need a layer of protection for the baby I think we could make something from it yeah I think we could I think we absolutely could well boys Make Captain Rampu proud, and I hand it off to them. I will look at it and then just defer to Crick because I have no <laughs> abilities. I'm just like, buddy, this is 100% your area of expertise. I can just provide some magical assistance as needed. We'll make someone proud. Let's I'd go up to the. the uh, uh, I'd go up to the dragon and see if he's got any like. Pouches where he's stashing gold and the dragon's like gold. <laughs> Go and make a uh, perception check. He's got a knapsack. <laughs> he's not like a tiny knapsack. 25. Oh, Pikachu. Pikachu knapsack. 25, not bad. <laughs> um, as you're looking around, you lift out certain flats and legs, you're like, lifting it over your head and like got one hand up, or two of your of one side of your arms lifting up as the other two on the other side are fishing around and looking through every nook and crevice of the dragon's uh, corpse. Uh, lo and behold, you unfortunately don't find a, a pocket of sorts or anything, but you do find... Roll a d100. Eighty-two. Eighty-two. Um, all right. So, kind of like underneath of like its leg, you lift up a couple of different areas, and you lift up a scale, and you're trying to like 
like find any sort of opening or anything in here. Uh, you find what looks like a, a loose piece of like parchment paper like stuck underneath of one of his scales. Yeah, I would yoink that. Yoink! As you pull it out, uh, unmistakably, you unravel it and you see that this uh, has some sort of strange arcane writings on it, uh, producing that of a spell scroll. Beautiful. And I'm guessing I can't read it, or I would have to take the time to study uh, it. You can make an arcana check, if you'd like. Yeah, let's do that. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> to you, it's a little bit of a, you know, gibberish, but given the time and resources, and maybe just the right eyes, uh, you, clear, you could certainly uh, unravel uh, the meaning of the spell scroll. <laughs> Yes, I would have noticed Rampu uh, gave off that that uh, I guess hide to uh, Crick uh, to take care of. So I would then go to Langston and be like, "You re read this for me and uh, figure this out. What this is?" Uh, first of all, you know my name. Come on, buddy. You know I don't do this you stuff. And I'll just Hi, like, Langston. yeah. How we doing, Manzo? Yeah. Remember that dragon? Let me see this. Not like take it out of his hands and just like open the scroll to see if I can decipher it. Yeah, um... As you unravel it real quick, go and roll an arcana check. Uh... Um, Manto, you notice a a small, like, porcelain or alabaster kind of, uh, ma like, material collapse out of the same area that you, you grabbed that scroll from. Oh. What's that? You grab uh, it, you pick it up, and... As it's in your hand, you notice it looks like a, like a tiny finger bone or something like that. Oh, you, you got a bone there? Uh, I guess yeah. That's what it looks like to me. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I I don't really know why he'd have this. Does it look like a human bone? Like a little human finger? Yeah, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at the bone. Uh, can I determine what like race of bone it's from? You, you couldn't determine the race. We can certainly tell it's a humanoid creature. Absolutely. Definitely like a humanoid finger mm -hmm. bone. Hmm. hmm. Okay. Is there anything else in there? Uh, well, the scroll. Uh, Linkson, like, thanks. shakes out the scroll and is like, Any, anything? We, we good? Okay. Um, and I rolled a 13. Can I use my inspiration to re-roll that? Well, a 13 is actually perfect. Oh, okay. Um, as you unravel it, uh, you notice that it has uh, inscribed on it the instructions and preparations to cast uh, the invisibility spell uh, one time. Oh, that's dope. And and uh, as you just figure that out, uh, Manto, you're still kind of like holding this bone in your hand. You notice a couple more fall out from the si behind the same scale that you grabbed the the scroll from. What the heck? I would reach over, or I'd go over to the dragon and like reach under those scales to see if there's like. Actually, how? When I kind of like stick my hand in there, am I able to like? manipulate so that my other hand can kind of get in there and like stretch it open. Yeah, yeah, totally. You can kind of pull it open like that. Really? Can I can I get in? Uh well, you you kind of pull open and as you look in, you see uh remains and debris of a a humanoid corpse underneath the scales there. You see a satchel uh beside it, a little deteriorated and roughened up and uh it looked like, uh, as you see, the arm bones in pieces kind of extended out towards like where the hand should be. It was like at the edge of the scales. Uh, seeming like where you grabbed the scroll out of its grasp. Hmm. Uh, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, I I guess see if I can get that, that, uh, that satchel page. 
No, it's like a whole like bag, yeah, that he has like beside uh, its its body. Uh, as you do, you hear like this jingling sound, and you feel the weight of it. And I know that sound. You <laughs> feel the weight of the bag as you lift it up, and there's 169 gold pieces inside of it. Nice, nice, gentlemen. <laughs> We struck gold, baby. I knew I could smell something. Ooh, literally. Literal gold. How about that? Yep, so everyone yeah. take uh, 42 gold. Very nice. Thank who you, gets, sir. Who gets 43? Uh, me. <laughs> I, I found it. That's I slipped it out. That checks out. I stuck my hand in the dragon. <laughs> and, um, as, and as he was doing all that, I was literally like, God damn it, Manto. Us dragons do not carry around dragon gold. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And then his hand comes out. 169 gold. And I'm like, <laughs> well, fuck me. You were saying. <laughs> um, I, I would also look. Is there Was there any sort of, like, identification, uh, like, in the satchel, indicating, like, whose satchel it was? Maybe if uh, Bucks knew the, the uh, fallen fellow. Yeah, you actually, you find a, a scroll tube uh, sealed with, like, a wax-dipped top inside the bag. Uh, clearly, it's still sealed fully. Uh, yeah, I'd also yoink that. Okay. And rip, or carefully open it up. Okay, as you open it up, you unravel, and you see a scroll with uh, writing in common on it. Ah, I know that. You can read this. <laughs> I don't need you for this one, Langston. You got it, buddy. I'm leaving it to you. Yeah, as, as you begin to, you, uh, you open it up, unravel, and begin to read it. You read it. It's the writing is a little illegible. Seems like maybe like a child wrote it or something. It says, "Dear Papa, please come back soon. I know that Mommy says you're going to go out and get us riches and gold, but." I'm hungry back home, and we could really use it soon. Signed, Nancy. Kind of pansy wrote this letter. It didn't give any sort of like last name or location, anything like that. No, but from what you're able to gather from this is that it was just some <laughs> unlucky, down on his luck father trying to get some money for his family and the wrong, in the worst possible way uh, a solar dragon layer potentially and uh, unfortunately he met his fatal end bummer thanks so for the gold buddy sorry Nancy <laughs> <laughs> so tough Yeah, this Nancy would have wanted us to have the gold. This heartfelt yeah, letter from his daughter just tossed to the side. <laughs> but you guys have gold, so... True. <laughs> Maybe we'll find Nancy and we can do some late repayments. Alright, kill or get killed. <laughs> oh, I see it. <laughs> Ain't that right, it's Dragon? Fair. There's no point in having that gold go to waste, you know what I mean? It's not Another we can right. do. Maybe the and dragon was Nancy. We, and we did kill the dragon, which means technically we avenged Nancy, which means technically we deserve a reward for her actions. So uh, <laughs> that's how I see it. <laughs> Stole breakers, we got paid for work. Down, train and thought. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> To get good day's work to me. Yeah, that checks out. Crux from the back of the ship comes stomping on up after you see him and Flinch been having words for the last ten minutes. Uh, both of them putting blame on each other. Uh, Crux makes his way on up here. He's like, hey, uh, guys, one dragon on the ship is enough. He starts to kick the corpse and he takes a couple steps back just in case it reacts. Two is, is way too many. Can we... Oh, shit. 
left a big old hole in the ship, too. Well, can we get this thing out of here and, and maybe get some repairs going? Yeah, that's on me, Crux. Appreciate it, Manto. Uh, someone want to give him a hand? I know he's got four of them, but he could still use one. I can help him out. I have... I'll just have mending at the ready. We can spruce this thing up. As it as at this point, I'm like cutting out like a nice breast fillet um, <laughs> out of the dragon, and we've got a couple nice cuts. And well, I think uh, it's time to set this thing out to pasture. Well, ro roll a uh, uh, survival I'm, check I'm a... for me to see how well your cuts actually are. But go on. I am a dark mead fellow. If you could uh, kind of head towards uh, the thigh and rump area, that'd be great. Crick with like a uh, retro Thanksgiving style carver blade attachment puts on <laughs> to his arm and starts to just hack away at this thing. And similar to how those things kind of work, if if you don't have it sharpened and, and, and moving correctly, kind of cuts and serrates the the meat a little bit, shredding it up, and you get a hunk of it off. It's not pretty, but you definitely get some salvageable uh, dragon meat. Looks like. Steaks on the menu, boys. <laughs> as but long as Rampoo's cool it. with it, I love it. <laughs> All right, I love eating treasonous dragons. Okay, <laughs> I'm just hands are up. They're a they're a very hungry people, Langston. Langston Sad. just looks at Aho, and it's like, how do, how do you feel about this little one? Uh, uh he'll learn. Yeah, as Aho is like kind of peeped its head up on the top deck once again after Crick uh, ushered them away to safety. Make sure the coast is clear. It begins to kind of like slink its way back over to you guys and once again. And Langston, you hear a voice in your head uh, and in a draconic resonance says, that is the dragon way. Kill or be oh. killed. Alright. Ten days into the world, you're already so wise. <laughs> Just know that. You know, most, most captains have a mutinous uh, treasonous jerks just walk the plant nah I nah. we just eat them okay so yeah. let's say hypothetical situation Langston dies food is low is Langston eaten are we eating me if I'm Slowly dead you're eating. holy Don't shit you, I can let you go to waste okay. uh, we had total waste of your name I would totally eat you and then you know, pray for you and everybody would know that you it was a fantastic dinner that we talk about for years. It'd never be forgotten. You are presenting this in such an optimistic way. Thank God. Crick, would you oh, think about this? I... Right? What would you prefer? Be a delicious dinner, or I just throw you off overboard to be forgotten, or bury you in some ditch? That just sounds awful. You the know only what? Thing... Go ahead, God. No, Either I, I would eat you, or the worms would. You decide. <laughs> yeah. What's the only thing, Manto? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said, you know, after uh, finding that, like, hidden pouch uh, in the dragon, all I can think of is if Rampoo has any, and if he's hiding any <laughs> gold under his pouches. Or... Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not telling you that. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> Got his dragon and gold I, on and him I, somewhere. Uh, and I said, that's ridiculous. And I walk away and I rearrange my <laughs> dragon gold. <laughs> Langston, you feel a tug on the back of your, your shirt, of your, your armor, and suddenly oh. you're lifted off of the ground. You feel, you look down, you're five feet, ten feet off the ground. You look up as Starbo has you in his grasp. And he says, if anyone's going to eat you, it's going to be me. I hear you have light in you. And I like light. He begins to gently put you down and then pats you on the head. But I'm not going to eat you. Don't worry about that. Say hey! I caught dibs on the thighs. <laughs> uh, Langston just looks at Starbo and just. I had a feeling you're a dark beast, him, lad. And just <laughs> walks downstairs and doesn't sleep. He doesn't sleep that <laughs> night. He's just wide-eyed and is like, okay. You notice yep. the roots that sink into the ship, you know, make up the ship's body and everything, you know, they kind of feed through the system of the ship. Uh, throughout the night, the 
some of the roots seem to inch closer and closer to you, Langston, while you're sleeping. I still have my hand axe, and I'll <laughs> chop it in front of him. I'm like, don't even think about it. And I was going to get you rocks to throw. You just lost that privilege, mister. You just watch the roots recoil back <laughs> instantly, uh, disappearing from your sight. Uh, fantastic. I regret bringing up this hypothetical instantly. <laughs> Uh, after this battle and, uh, and scene and everything, is there anything that anyone needs to take care of before we, uh, potentially just move it on along? A any discussions nope. about what happened? Or, All uh, alright. Okie dokie. So, as you guys see in the distance, as I mentioned, uh, prior to this encounter, um, you guys can see the silvery haze. It begins to thin out. Uh, more and more as the ship enters into a system now, finally, after the first time for over 20 days, almost a month. Uh, but the system appears to have no sun. Uh, the ship, oh. it, it glides between colossal fragments of uh, smoky gray crystal, uh, almost like remnants of an outer shell of fantastic proportions. And as a silent and lifeless as a graveyard, this place... Doom space. It gives a new meaning to the phrase "dead of night." And <laughs> as you guys begin to enter into this space, let me go ahead and switch your guys' scene so you can see the darkness. Darkness. Oh yeah, look at that. Real dark. Oh yes, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> darkness um, everywhere. Oops. Yeah, as you guys arrive your way onto here. Um, Topla makes her way onto the top deck. Just finally, Doom Space. I, I never thought we'd make it here. Uh, Crick, uh, do you have the uh, the orrery? Absolutely. As I kind of hand it over to her. Ah, wonderful. And she let me go ahead and sh put her closer to you guys. Um, she, she gets the orrery out and says, "All right, well, we'll just." Now that we have it attuned to Doom Space, you guys look and you see the the Wild Space Ori. It shows this like like black vortex with two planets slowly spiraling around it. Um, you see the system also has like twelve moons, uh, one close to the vortex and one orbiting each planet, and you see nine other little moonlets. And uh, and Topol and Crux are hovered over this thing and. As you guys are observing this, Crux puts out his fat finger and says, There! And uh, points out one of the biggest of the outer moons. He says, uh, That's that's a rune right there. Uh, looks like it's just about three days away from where we are now. Uh, and with, with luck, that's where we'll find my old comrade, Warwick. Blast him off. Wow. Uh, what say you guys? Uh, re ready to make it? Make it on over there? Let's do it! I mean, we've already been on the path. Ain't no point diverging now. Kind of pat, slaps you on the back. That's right, Lynx, and that's right. Tarun! And, uh, Topla kind of co collapses the orderly and, uh, says, all right, um, we'll get right on to it then. Goes back down to the spell jammer helm, and she's kind of muttering to herself, you know, I'm surprised you guys really haven't put a battling ram on this thing yet. Could really come in handy. She kind of just disappears down the stairs. And Crux like she's got a tendency for violence. I like her. <laughs> All right, well, we know you're. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. We have the battery rams are an option. Yeah, I mean, you, you, I guess put anything on the ship if you want to. We can put spikes on the side of it. I've seen some crazy folks do that. Uh, you know, put a battering ram on the front. We could, we could build other other guns if we wanted to. Other uh, machinery. I just, you know. You guys been kind of just lazing around and playing dice with, with Garganel all, all month. Didn't want to bother you. Sounds, sounds like a lot of work for a ship that we don't own. You know, that's a good point. As you guys kind of look around and see a bunch of, like, repairs that clearly still need to be made prior to when you guys got on this <laughs> ship. I got holes in the mast and everything. It's like, that's a good point. I uh, don't expect you to do anything, but kind of gives you a wink. It is encouraged. <laughs> that's fair. I'll, I'll think about it. I won't do anything, probably. 
Uh -huh. <laughs> Lucius is honest. Uh, doesn't mince his words, that's for sure. We we fixed the repairs from uh, that dragon now. Uh, yeah, See, that's, that's 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 what we do. If there's any damage that we cause, you know, we'll take care of that. But oh, aside from that, I'm gonna just keep practicing my pew pews. <laughs> you go for it, Manto. Uh, you pew pews. Pew -pews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how does that work with your like exos? Uh, you know, never mind. Uh, let's yeah. let's keep it going. <laughs> um, so uh, you guys continue traveling onwards. Uh, after you guys have learned that you're three days away from a rune, anything that you guys need to take care of before we try to continue on there? I see pew pews. Pew pews, uh, yep. Go ahead and take three more days of uh, training. Uh, I'm going to try to repair the ship a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm also. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. And I, I don't think we can really build a, a weapon in three days, but repair the ship, maybe see if we can actually... Make a battering ram. That would be pretty cool. Hell yes. Um, so for uh, some ship repairs, um, do you have mending? Uh, yes, I do. Cool. Mm -hmm. I do as well. Uh, awesome. So you guys, uh, mending is the cheapest way for you guys to repair a ship, and the least time-consuming way as well. Mm -hmm. um, you guys can um, roll a D8. Plus your spell casting modifier for each hour of repairs that you guys each do with the mending spell. Uh, without okay. mending, repairing uh, one hit point of damage uh, takes one day and costs twenty gold pieces of uh, materials and labor. Well, good one. Doing, <laughs> doing that at all? Yes. I will. So, tell me if I can do this. Um, I'll spend four hours to start with mending, mm -hmm. um, and so I'll just roll 48 and then add uh, 12, because my modifier is Perfect. plus three. Um, so start with this. That's incredible. So 24, um, 24 I guess. Okay. And then um, can I use... So I took Unseen Servant as my first level spell. If this is used, does that mean it's gone forever, or do we have this first level spell it's, it's a one-time use thing. Ah, that changes It's like a quick things. little blessing that this strange mage, who seemed to be astral projecting or something in, in the astral sea, uh, blessed upon you guys for that, his, the help you provided him. Okay, word. Then I will save that. I will just do eight hours total for this day, then. There we go. So... so. Okay. 16 plus 12, so 24 plus 28, 52? Cool. 50, 52. Uh, amazing. Yeah, you rapidly using your arcane abilities to mend and repair the ship uh, back to working order. Uh, Crick along with you as well. Crick, if you'd like to hey, buddy. jump on in. Eight hours. That plus eight times three, Ooh. 24, so 39 plus 24. 40, 50, 63. Yeah, you guys in uh, very little time comparatively to what a non-arcane working crew would produce. You guys get this sh the front of this ship repaired fast and ready, and uh, Crux goes down uh, in between I mean, before, you know, after telling you guys about the ship repairs could be worked on goes down and fixes himself up a drink, and then he makes his way back up the stairs you see him blowing off the heat of like a of a hot cocoa, and as he gets up the stairs and comes walking over to you guys, his eyes go wide as uh, he sees the ship in complete repair um, after just, you know, taking a bit of a nap downstairs for a bit of time and uh, comes up and is like, whoa, 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 hey, Crick, Langston, uh, the Rampu and Manto, I don't know if I have them to thank as well, as I see you two just sweating it off over here, but thank you. Uh, like, this is impressive. I I thought it was going to maybe take a, a month at least to fix this up, but I think you two just earned yourself a permanent spot on my ship if you want it. I look wait, up wait, wait. Just so you know, as captain, I get 33% of all the credit. So, oh, so you know. That is how that works. I, I know the, the, the one-thirds uh, rule. So you are very welcome. Yeah. All my help. Yeah. Everyone else gets two-thirds. I get one-third. 
No, of course. <laughs> it's better than Mike three just fifths. finishes touching up the mast and is like, yep, nope, that checks out. That's fair. <laughs> I know nothing of ships of sea life. I I can't question this if I wanted to. <laughs> just kind of looks back at the rules. You'll, you'll learn one day. <laughs> of course. Uh, as, as you guys have been traveling on, uh, pulls out a, a long spyglass and he kind of taps you, Rampu, as uh, he's looking through it and he hands it on over to you. And I go take a look to see what, is, what he's looking at. You see uh, this moon uh, out set from like the central of this of the solar system. Uh, I guess not even a solar system because there's not a sun in it, but regardless, it's a plain like scape. Uh, you see this moon stretched out with this lush tapestry of a uh, uh, vegetation, a plant life, and, and uh, rugged mountain terrain. And uh, as you're staring at it, you can even swear you see like flashes of light uh, coming off of this moon. Oh, this is not like uh, any moon I've ever seen. Oh, that's no the moon. What all this? I'm just kidding. That's from a movie. Uh, that's uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that that's a rune over there. That's uh, where Warwick should be. He's he's been get together a, a coalition of of enemies against the Astral Elves so we can put them in their fucking place once and for all. Hey, hey. I think I want to like it here then. That's right. Uh, Doom Space is a strange place, but kind of like takes a big inhale and, and uh, takes it all in. He's like. But it's a damn fun place. It's like Arun. Uh, well, kind of looks around. Who, who's gonna be on the away team with me? Who's gonna actually uh, navigate the moon with me? You see Topla backing away. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm driving. It disappears. Yeah. Can you elaborate, Crux? How are yeah, we navigating the moon? We're uh, well, we'll, we'll get Topla to take us on down there. Get us a bit lower and uh. And Warwick should be on there. Uh, last I spoke to him before I met you guys for the first time, and that's where he was going. Uh, so, you know, we'll go down there, and we're, we're going to try to track him and find him and see if uh, we can get that coalition of his uh, with us, oh, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll gang it up with you. All right. Looks over at Crick. You and Buddy. Dude. Absolutely. Crick. Should... Are we okay with us, everyone from our group, leaving the ship while Aho is on the ship? Oh, well, uh, Aho's not going to leave my side. It might be dangerous to bring him. I could leave Jake behind to protect him. Aho's not going to leave my side. Okay, well, in that case, before we go, I look back at Crick and Langston. You two better finish that protective measure. Hey. That's an order. No, it's okay. Work. Yep, you got it. Oh yeah, we're working on the dragon scales to make a little dragon blanket. A little. Dragon. Oh, that's right. Um, thinking, I'm... thinking like Batman, you know, when he uses his cape like rah, to protect himself against shit. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's like a little like cocoon that he can, like sit in and not move potentially. Yes. Um. Yeah, if, if you're crafting that, go ahead and make a uh, crick. Make like a, uh, let's do Arcana. Can I help him out with this? <laughs> yeah, you can. Roll another one. Hooray! Nice. Um, so yeah, I would say that like in between, you know, you guys, the first day repair the ship and everything. Uh, after that, until the time of when, um, you know, uh, Crux comes out and, and shows you guys a rune, you guys spend a bit of time, um, studying and crafting with these materials, uh, these glimmering, like, scales, and, uh, yeah, I would say you're able to, uh, after, after the two days of work, um, able to craft a little, a little shell, a cocoon, a protective layer for uh, your dragon buddy to nestle up in, if you'd like. Uh, it seems to have even some, you know, with the radiance of the solar dragon itself, it seems to even actually have some innate uh, radiant uh, energy negation properties to it. 
Can can nice. we say we put straps in it so it's like a baby Bjorn? Yeah, <laughs> so we can carry him around. He's got Bluetooth too. What? <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Uh, yeah, so you've got this like baby Bjorn made of dra- shimmering gold dragon scales that uh, he fits inside of as a protective layer. Uh, we'll say that it gives him a bonus of like uh of three quarters cover essentially so plus five bonus plus radiant resistance huge all right well he's in that our boy is safe yep so he's gonna be up in that joint all right love it uh you guys feel the ship set propelling forward now as you guys are approaching uh closer and closer to the moon uh begin to descend downwards getting lower and lower to the surface of a rune now. Um, Did we all long rest too, I guess? Yes, can all long oh, rest, going to... yes, absolutely. Okay. Let me do that real quick, and then I'm gonna do some other spells. Give me one second. Yeah, please. Dun, 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 yeah, any spellcasters, you need to switch spells, go for it. Uh, but as yeah, you go... How do I add that extra level one spell? Yeah, so go to your feats. Um, and scroll all the way down to the bottom. I made a thing called like the Gift of the Archmage or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, but um, you can click that, and then your right side panel window will open up, and then it'll give you an option to select the first level spell in there. Thank you. Of course. Um, so as you guys are descending down to one of these nine uh, moonlets orbiting, uh outside or at like the edge of doom space essentially you see this wild untamed world as a room stretches down below as i mentioned this lush tapestry of greenery uh clinging to jagged rock pillars that reach skyward uh you see flashes of lightning flicker flicker through the thick foliage illuminating the vibrant jungle canopy like a strobe light uh ramp of course you would recognize the it's like the flashes of light that you saw from the distance but as you guys fully descend now, uh, hovering above the surface, as you guys can't land a, a you know a ship like that on the ground, uh, you guys descend and you hear the sounds of alien wildlife. It fills the air, uh, a cacophony of calls and rustles echoing around you. Uh, Commodore Crux gets out to the edge and surveys the land with a practiced eye. Um, his expression is quite serious as he looks around, once again reminding you guys, no, Warwick should be meeting some allies down there. Hey, uh, Mr. Flinch. Snaps a little bit. Go over the ladder for us. And, uh, Flinch the Hadozi, he, you know, he goes over and releases the rope ladder off the edge, which unfurls down to the treetops down below. Um, you guys all, your hearts are pounding with anticipation. And Crux looks around and yells out, So, uh, away team! With me! Let's go. Yes, sir. All right. Let's go, team. As uh, Crux leads the way, climbing down the ladder, the ship hovering about 50 feet above the ground. Uh, you guys each follow behind him as your feet touch down on this lush green tapestry of Arun. And Crux looks around with a little bit of excitement, anticipation as he begins to lead you guys on your way. Um, the jungle around you, as you guys begin to traverse forward now, um, it thickens with every step. You see these ancient trees towering overhead as twisted vines and dense foliage encroach you guys from all sides. Um, unfamiliar sounds, they echo throughout the greenery and the calls of strange creatures hidden in the shadows and the faint crackle of lightning arcing between the distant rocky pillars of course uh, gathers your attention uh, the humid air is heavy carrying this rich earthy scent of damp soil and moss and uh, moving carefully through the undergrowth crux pushing aside leaves and greenery you guys begin to scan for any sign of warwick's presence um can I um, just like tap on Crux's shoulder and just be like, can you describe Warwick to me? I know he's an old friend of yours. Can you describe him in vivid detail? Oh, 
<laughs> Absolutely, I can picture him as if I was just with him yesterday. Uh, he looks like me, but a little bit bigger. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Anything else? Uh, ah, you should. That should cover it. Not too many gifts should be walking around a ruin. Okay, got it. Just a gift. Um, look kind of like you. Is he a little bit taller? A little bit shorter? A little bit. I mean, he's a little bit taller, but don't let that get to his head or anything. Oh, of course not. Okay. Um, and then with that, um, Langston's gonna ball it up, eat it, and then use that to cast Locate Creature to try and find, um, Warwick and see where he is within a thousand feet. If he's outside of a thousand feet, then RIP fourth level spell slot, but if he's within it, then I should know right where he is. Absolutely. Um, so you, you mean to tell me you ha we you have a problem with us eating you if you died, but you just ate all the paper? That you're telling me you don't see a clear distinction between them. Be fair. Hey, one, if he eats meat, all that paper, paper. If, he, if he eats all that paper, it makes it easier to barbecue, so go on. Okay, so I just ate kindling. I regret everything. <laughs> I regret everything on that boat that I said. <laughs> Listen, I, I'll eat it and I'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about, and just cut off mid sentence and just like in the direction. Just, he's here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, as you cast that uh, d detect uh, person, or uh, what spell was it? Was it detect person? Uh, locate. locate creature. Locate creature. Um, it can locate a specific creature known to me or the nearest creature of a specific kind. Um, if I've seen the creature up close at least once, um, but if it has the thing, then it's within a thousand feet. I know the direction of its movement. Okay, and it's so, concentration I don't for know an if hour, this... so you do have it up for an hour. Correct. So at least general direction where we should be going. Okay, yes. Uh, you feel this Shit. this pool, you know, just like, you know, the same kind of thing. Have you been like, kind of messing with the the threads of the weave of arcane nature you feel this pool like you're tethered to one of these threads and it's yanking you like you know to your eyes east uh to continue onwards and uh definitely get a sense of that you know creature in that direction cool well uh gentlemen do do east i guess we keep on As you guys uh, continue on into the thick foliage of the, the jungle here, uh, continue looking for any sort of, you know, you see, you see Crux, like, get down on his knees and, like, start pushing branches and leaves to the side uh, and observing how he stands up and gets his spyglass out. He's like, ah, this isn't working right now. Uh, too many damn trees. He uh, smacks Rampu in the chest. Hey, hey, you're, like... You know, like trees and, and forests and woods and stuff, right? I do. Yeah, yeah. Help me find uh, some sort of trail for, for Warwick here. I know we're going in this direction thanks to Langston, but maybe we can help him get a little bit more precise. I love it. Uh, well, let's take a look. Uh... Yeah, do you wanna do you wanna like look for something, or do you wanna tr like do any tracking with like, with survival? Yeah, I'll do I'll do some tracking. Okay, sure. I'll see if I can find any, you know, anything that would show any pattern where maybe he was walking, footprints, anything of the sort. Okay. So survival check. Yes, please. Delcus, come on, baby. 12. 12. Uh, I'll lucky that. I'll, let me lucky that. Sure. If you don't mind. I do not. 21. Much that, better. That is much better. Uh, as you see Crux like bent over and like pushing leaves aside and stuff and trying to like find any sort of signs of Warwick's presence at all. Uh, he pushes over some leaves and then stands back up and you're like, well, wait a minute. And you lift, push over aside one of the leaves that he just moved and you see a small... Uh, metallic cylinder, like a a musket round, a, a like a shell of a from a gun, of sorts. Ah, uh, I would call attention to that and bring him over and say, "Do you recognize this?" His eyes go wide. That's that's definitely Warwick's make. Uh, he kind of starts looking around, head on a swivel. 
It's got to be, uh, it's got to be in that direction. And you look down, and you, as he points in that direction, you can see these large, massive, you know, hippo human like footprints indented into the ground, uh, deep underneath some of the foliage as well. I smile and I say, Yep, there definitely seems to be a, a bigger version of you running around here. And I show him the footprints. That way, let's go. He starts to get a little hustle in his step now. Do you guys all follow the same hustle, or? Uh, um, yes, I I stay close, but uh, I I give him a few feet of leeway. I'm gonna keep making sure that we're not being followed. No one's watching us, and of sort. All right. Uh, you can make a perception check. Uh, anyone else? Manto, is there something you want to chime in and do? Uh, no. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, thirteen. Yeah, you kind of look around behind you, make sure no one's trailing you guys. Uh, sight looks clear. As you guys are, though, making your way deeper and deeper into the thick foliage now. Uh, kind of hard to make out the distance um, now, but being the, you know, the ranger that you are, the survivalist that you are, you keep your guys tracking your trail and, uh, you guys heading in the right direction, Ramp Hill. Alright. Alright. Any, anyone else, uh, want to chime in here? As you guys are making your way through the woods? I've got a little, little, uh, aho in the, in the Bjorn. I give him a little bite of dragon meat as we're kind of in the back, making sure everything's secure it's uh I'm, yeah go on God, no uh, would I be able to ritual cast detect magic to see if there's anything around us at the moment uh so, yes is detect magic concentration though uh it, it is locate creature oh about that never mind <laughs> didn't even notice <laughs> ignore me alright uh crick as you are you know holding on to your dragon buddy and, and you feed him a little bit of scraps of the dragon see he's enamored by it takes a chomp out of it and uh, seems to really be loving that in this moment uh, you see and actually you kind of like really sense this connection this deep bonding connection with this draconic uh, creature now and um, you just feel like everything is right in this moment uh, as if like you know you're destined to be connected with one another. Just pride, smile, happy in the back. Yeah, you continue, continue walking on, feeding the dragon, and you guys hear it snap as Crick is, makes a a guttural kind of sound, and uh, Crick underneath your feet, you feel a snapping like uh, uh, feeling as uh, a layer of the jungle foliage gives out to a pitfall underneath of you. I need you to make a deck saving throw. Oh no. Um I'm gonna do the deck saving throw. Can I use my boots of the winding path and teleport out of the hole? Yeah. Yeah, you can use that ability. That's exactly what happens with the I got a little baby board and I just I, I start feeling the sink and then the boot just kinda drag me back. Love that. Yeah, as you uh, look down, you're about to collapse down onto the bottom of this pit. You see these jagged spikes crisscrossing each way, made out of uh, you know, natural and, and uh, man-made kind of uh, materials. Uh, quickly, you, you know, and with instinct, you revert back to where you were just uh, a second ago, standing on top of that, and you look down now as you're in uh, out of harm's way. Uh, to see what could have been this spiked pitfall down below you. So as I look down, I call out to the team. Do you think this was made by your friend? Uh, Crux looks over the hole. Uh, I don't know about that. It's uh, a little too shoddy, if you ask me. Hmm. We may want to keep an eye out. There may be Crick some natives did you just moonwalk out of a hole yeah okay just making sure absolutely 
since I kind of yeah, like you know, tap my boots a little bit. Yeah, par for the course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, should we proceed stealthily? Instead of, I know when a, you know, you want to see a friend, but do you think we could maybe go a little bit more stealthily on this one if this wasn't Warwick's design? Crux kind of, he like stops here now and looks around. Well, I guess we can, I guess we can maneuver this a little bit smarter. We don't need to be so, uh, you know, on edge and, and run, making our way there as quickly as possible. I just he kind of, you see the expression on his face changes. Honestly, I'm a little worried. I mean, I am too, but I feel like if we get there in pieces, just because we it's... wanted to hurry, I I don't know if that's worth it. As I look down the hole, this doesn't worry you. Oh, no, it it does. I, I'm glad to see Warwick's down at the bottom of it. Uh, let's, Langston, you're right. Let's, let's maybe slow it down a little bit. Manto. Will you come here? Will you? You seem to be uh, highly perceptible. Yeah, 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 yeah. How about how about you take the lead with me? And actually, Rampu, you too. You, you got a good sense for those trails and that track. And uh, how about we do this, Rampu? You you keep an eye on the trail, the tracks. Make sure we're going in the right direction. Manto, you make sure that we don't have any harm coming our way. Uh, traps, enemies. I don't know, anything unwanted. No traps of That's the gooby kind. Got it. I mean, kind of shakes it. It would be nice. All right, let's go. Um, he keeps on <laughs> hustling on. You see him in his mind, like thinking about boobies, and um, he <laughs> keeps on keeps on hiking. <laughs> Were you gonna say something? Oh, I thought you. Uh, as Crux continues to lead you guys on Rampu, making sure the trail of those large footprints, uh, you guys stay on that, and Manto keeping his head on a swivel. Uh, we'll pick it up there the next time we get together and see how the rest of this travel continues on. Ooh. Whoa. I like mm. it. Love it. We're, we're, we're on a planet. We're on a moon. In, 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 we're, in, we're off the ship. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> back on the ground. Progress. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, we could have been here three games ago if I didn't write a bunch of stuff. Uh, but that's okay. I feel like. Interactions are fun. I feel like I we mean, now I got a dragon. <laughs> that's right. I, this, so the, the whole solar dragon thing I wrote at. Four, you know, half hour before we started playing. Um, it God was... damn. <laughs> that, that was what you guys rolled for. That was what Johnny said, do the most fun one, and I did. Um, <laughs> it was just a, you could choose a, a solar dragon of one of a type. So I was, yeah, that'd be fun. Um, cool, like cool. Uh, heads up, guys. I will be heading out of town, not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday for a week. Um... Yeah. So we'll get this Sunday in, and then we'll probably have a, a week break, uh, just so you guys know. Or a week. Sure. Sure. Makes Is that sense. Thanksgiving week? Uh, it's the week. I'll get back two days before Thanksgiving. So okay. so we might have that Sunday off as well. I don't know what you know how everyone's availability is. Of course, we'll discuss it. But uh, definitely, we'll have next Sunday, but the following Sunday, I, I will be out of town. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yes, sir. We're, well, thank you all for playing. Thanks, y'all, for watching. Uh, I'm glad no one died tonight. It was close, though, with Rampu and Langston. But uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys uh, the next time, and uh, look out for those goblins on the stairs. <laughs> Take it easy, y'all. Later, Gators. Later, Gators. Later, Gators. Later, Gators.